Hi, everybody. This is the old redhead welcoming you to another big league game, and there's never been one like this before. We're at the Astrodome for the opening at Houston, Texas. Brought to you by Ballantine Beer. Yes, sir. Welcome to the 19th straight great year of Yankee baseball at Ballantine. Tonight, it's the Yankees at Houston against the Astros. And we've got our full broadcasting team. Just looking around, Phil Rizzuto, Joe Garagiola, Jerry Coleman. And we're all here on deck at Houston to bring you all the action and paint the picture of this Astrodome for you. And uh, this baseball broadcast comes to you by courtesy of P. Valentine and Sons, R.J. Reynolds Tobacco Company, and the Tidewater Oil Company, and your neighborhood flying A dealer in cooperation with Sports Network and by authority of the Yankees and is intended solely for the private enjoyment of our viewing and listening audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this play-by-play -play description without the express consent of the Yankees is prohibited. Right now, there are premier ceremonies out in uh, short center field uh, with Governor John Connolly of Texas, state, county, city, and uh, Houston uh, Sports Association officials. Uh, this is a tremendous uh, day in Houston and in Texas, and I would say in baseball. And uh, actually, uh, there's been nothing in the paper particularly about the ball game, except that uh, it's incidental to the unveiling of this, of this tremendous Astrodome, which is um, technically known as the Harris County uh, uh, Astrodome, but they call it the uh, Astrodome. And I think before we go any farther, uh, with all these people here and the ceremonies going on, we want to give you a little bit of the flavor of what this ballpark is, uh, from the standpoint of three fellows who are not only broadcasters but were ball players, they have been down there on the field talking to ball players and managers and umpires and uh, newspaper men. And they walked out on the grass. They've looked up at the Astrodome and they've talked to outfielders. In fact, um, Rizzuto had a glove on and tried to catch a fly ball, even though the sun isn't shining. So, um, Phil, why don't you pick up the mic and you and Joe and Jerry get in here and let's um, get a listen on your reactions to it. All right, Red, I'll tell you what I think of it first. I think, number one, it's going to make every other ballpark in the world obsolete. Because it's so fantastic, you can't just describe it. Uh, you come in, if you come in on the ninth level, you look down, you see these beautiful colored seats, and it just takes your breath away. And then you come down to the press level where we are now, it's beautiful. Then you get on the field, and uh, you just can't believe that a ballpark could be so beautiful and yet so big and completely covered. Joe, what do you think about it? Well, I agree uh, that the size of it is the thing that got me, Phil. In fact, uh, coming into the ballpark, uh, I got lost, uh, just like I saw Mel Steiner, one of the umpires who was lost, wandering around. And I said, uh, with this Houston ball club, uh, you don't have to release any players. Just tell them to find a clubhouse. They get lost for two, three weeks. Uh, the ballpark is a tremendous ballpark in size in that uh, the elements don't figure in. So that was a big thing to me. I mean, you, the way you hit the ball is the way it's going to go. There are no jet streams, so to speak, in left center and right center. Uh, that was a, a big surprise to me. I guess Mantle put it best. Uh, I asked him about it, and Mantle said that this is the kind of a thing he would expect to see if he took a ride in a flying saucer. Uh, it looks like, uh, you know, a guy fell asleep, read Popular Mechanics, woke up and built this in the morning. Well, Joe, I'd, I would say to me, you talk about the flying saucer as we approach the Astrodome and the bus coming up here this afternoon. That's the uh, feeling you get that you've just landed on the planet Mars and there's the new city in the distance and there's the Astrodome. But more than that, I think this signals a new era in sports, period. In other words, now we don't have to worry about the oppressive humidity or the, the great heat as far as the uh, athletes are concerned. Uh, we're talking about areas now where uh, it's not convenient to play certain sports certain times of the year in many parts of the country. Uh, I think this is true uh, in the dead of winter when football is underway, some of the severe conditions they play under. To me, I think we're opening here tonight in Houston a new era in sports of all types, all sizes, everywhere. Jerry, I don't think there's a thing to it if you got uh, $31 million. Just open up all you want for each one of them. <laughs> Red, this isn't Ebbets Field at all, is it? I'm a little bit different than Ebbets Field. Speaking about Ebbets Field, Joe, uh, uh, Tommy Holmes, the veteran writer who used to write for the Brooklyn Eagle and now is uh, covering the Yankees for the Herald Tribune, somebody asked him what he thought about it. He said, I'll still take Ebbets Field. <laughs> I tell you, I, I, I almost agree with him because the, the fans will make it, and, you know, it's like over in Pittsburgh. I don't care what you got. You need the players. Well, listen, didn't Rizzuto have a glove down there during batting practice? Phil, uh, you got a bad jump on a lot of those balls. No, don't believe it, because little Nellie Fox wanted to bet me that I wouldn't catch one ball out of ten hit up, and I couldn't believe it. 
So I went out to left field, and uh, they surrounded me with three ball players, figuring my age and everything. They didn't want to see me get hurt. So I had big Walter Bond on one side. He's about 6'6". Six, six. Kenny Johnson, about 6'5", on my left. And little Rusty Little, he's about six feet tall, on my, and went back of me. And Fox hit three high fly balls. You could see them off the bat, but once they get above the girders, isn't you know, it? That big skylight up there. I lost them, and all four of us put our hands over our head and just hoped we wouldn't get hit. Well, Joe, uh, Phil, Jerry, for our audience, uh, maybe we ought to tell them that um, the denouement happened yesterday afternoon at 1.30 because uh, they have lucite uh, uh, holes up, the, not holes, uh, panels. I guess that's the word, panels. Uh, thousands of them, our friends, uh, uh, figures are just astronomical around this astrodome. But anyhow, the sun, the glare coming down yesterday afternoon, they tried to play a practice game, and it was impossible because the professional ball players couldn't see the ball, they couldn't catch it. And now they've got that structural defect, uh, which they do not have at night. So uh, this is what we are leading up to. And Phil, what time? It was late this afternoon when you went out there, wasn't it? Well, it was about 3.30, Red, and the sun was starting to set. But uh, you just can't believe anything said about this stadium until you see it. And I couldn't believe you could lose fly balls in a stadium like this, but you can. Was it because you lost it in the uh, the girders? That's what the guys were complaining yes. about. Yes. As soon as the ball gets above, uh, as I say, the background here where the fans are, you lose it completely. Paulette was saying uh, before the game that uh, when you lose a ball in the sun in, a, in an open field, you could find it out of the sun. But here you can't because you lose it in the girders. You're right, uh, Joe, because a lot of times, uh, you know, you, well, catchers don't wear sunglasses, but Jerry and I would once in a while. Not that you couldn't use them. Not you Son, particularly. I heard you right, Phil. That's okay. <laughs> but we, oh, I know Jerry and I used them, and you, as you say, you'd lose a ball in the sun, and then you could sort of turn sideways and get the ball coming out of the sun. But here you can't. Well, listen, now, uh, what's your fellows, you former ball players, what's your reaction to looking up instead of looking up on a fly ball against a clear sky? Even if it's at night, you're now looking up into a, uh, well, a quilt, a patchwork, a framework of uh, girders up there. I would liken it to a uh, complex of spider webs, really, and uh, watching the ball from the ground, those that were hit high in the air that passed through this, you lose the ball totally. And I would like to tell uh, our listeners, too, that they sent three dozen orange baseballs down here hoping that the color orange might improve the situation here. It didn't. It was actually worse. But on the other hand, these are mechanical problems. I think these things are going to be resolved. And uh, they also have a problem with the grass because of the consistency of it. It's not quite as firm as they would like. But generally speaking, um, I believe they have enough uh, scientific knowledge uh, in our day and age to overcome many of these problems. And I think that after the first run through, the first shakedown, a few weeks, uh, they'll iron these things out and we'll be sailing right along. Well, I understand in the early days that uh, several contractors who uh, first approached uh, refused this job because it, uh, they just didn't think it could be done uh, to put that, uh, well, that dome on it. We better get some figures, hadn't we? Uh, who's got all the figures, Phil? Judge Hoffheins, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> How big is the dome? Well, now, wait a minute. 642 feet across. Hey, guys, uh, nothing personal, huh? but refer to it as Astro Dome. I don't oh, like yeah. that word, dome. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry? Well, I've got a lot of figures here that are staring me in the face, and it says the Astro Dome is the world's biggest air-conditioned room contains 6,600 tons of air conditioning, costing $4.5 million each minute, 250,000 cubic feet of fresh air flow in, through 1,206 thermostatic valves. Well, Red, to answer that... your question, though, Jerry didn't get to it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he was kind of beating around the bush there. Here's the size of the dome. It has a clear span of 642 feet, twice that of any previous structure, a maximum height of 208 feet above the playing field. Now, Joe Garrett, you told me that Pedro Ramos hit the girders with a fungus. Ramos hit it from third base. The ball came down in foul territory because it was right after that that Frank Finch, the Los Angeles writer, said if they took the roof off this place, they'd have a nice park. I don't believe it. He did hit it. I understand because, naturally, uh, uh, it's hard to understand uh, how high so many hundred feet are. I understand that the Shamrock Hotel here is... Uh, 15 stories, and they can put it underneath this dome, right? Put, put it at second base and not touch the top. Uh, the home runs, Red, we're not carrying in batting practice either, uh, as far as uh, height. I was, man, was the only guy I saw hit one in in uh, Pepitone. I tell you, 
the size of this thing, you know, the first feeling I really had coming in here looking at the top of it was you you keep waiting for the elephant axe or the uh, the carousel or something. It's really a carnival spirit. Did you get that, Red? Well, Clark Nealon, who is one of the fine sports columnists down here, said that for a night ball game, which we are going to have shortly, and I can see what he means now that the lights are taking full effect that it's completely dark up above, that it's uh, like being in a, in a big uh, brand new opera house. We got uh, padded seats. Uh, oh, we got it all. Seats, the seats were beautiful. Did you sit in any of your seats, Phil? Yes, I did. Just It's better than any theater you've ever sat in. Jerry, you sit in any? I did. In fact, I tried them in the mezzanine, in the lower area, and they're all the same. It's just the color that's different. And you did can you? sit and relax here and enjoy yourself. Did you fellows go up there in those fifteen to $18,000 boxes and try those seats, Phil? I did. And, uh... Was it all one, wasn't it? Oh, sure, it was. If I could afford it, I'd have one right now. Hey, when when was the last time you walked into a ballpark and heard Red Barber say, I'm cold? That, now, that was unusual, but it is chilly here. The air conditioning is fantastic. What's that song that Bob Hope used to sing? Baby, it's cold. Oh, baby, it's cold outside. Well, it's cold inside. <laughs> and that's news for Houston, isn't it? I would say so. One of the big factors, Red, you remember when they were trying to combat the mosquitoes, uh, which were a big problem, because the standard joke around here last year was that the women wouldn't wear perfume, they'd wear uh, some kind of repellent, because the mosquitoes were so bad, and with this beautiful ballpark now, you have no problems. They tell me two of these mosquitoes down here could whip a bulldog. <laughs> <laughs> two out of three, though. <laughs> hey, how'd you like that one line where they said that... Uh, Talking about humidity here, it says, uh, who was it? Ed, Ed uh, no ball player. Bear Track, Bear Track Greer. Greer, Greer, Greer yeah. yeah. He said he didn't like to play in Texas because of the low humility and the high multitude. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got a high multitude out here tonight. I don't know about humility. In fact, uh, with all these millions around, I don't think there's much of it. Let me ask you something, Red. What do you think it's going to be like when they uh, have about 10,000 people here? I don't know, but we've got the governor of uh, Texas, John Connolly, on. Let's switch down. Tonight, ...who had nothing to do with the conception or the creation of this magnificent dome stadium. So I'm going to take this opportunity to hopefully pass a few bouquets to those who are responsible for it. And I want to say to the members of the city council, to Mayor Welch, the members of the commissioner's court, and Judge Elliott, to all of the people of Houston and Harris County who had the vision and who had the faith and the perseverance to see this through, that you have created something here that is unequaled in all the world. And I must single out, I think, for a special tribute. When we view this magnificent stadium that by any odds and by any definition is a tribute to the architectural and the engineering genius of this nation. It is even more than that because it is also a tribute and a monument to the vision, to the daring, to the imagination, to the persistence, and to the faith of two men, Bob Smith and Judge Roy Huffine. And may I point out that not in 2,000 years has man attempted such a feat. Not since the Colosseum of Rome was built and covered by a cloth candy has there ever been in all the long recorded history of man such a dome stadium. It is truly a marvelous feat, and it means much not only to Houston and Harris County, but to all of Texas, on behalf of all of Texas. I want to say to all of you who've made it possible the citizens of Harris County, that we are grateful. Let me say to all of you in attendance tonight that 40% of the seats that are occupied in this stadium are occupied from people who live outside of Texas, from 38 states in this nation. These are the same people that tonight fill all of the available hotel rooms in Houston, Texas, and who will fill those rooms and fill the restaurants for the next several days. This is more than steel and concrete. This is a great challenge. It's a great opportunity for all of us, and all of Texas is in the debt of those men who stand on this field tonight. Thank you very, very much.
friends. That was the Honorable John Conley, governor of the state of Texas. Of course, uh, from the governor down, everybody down here is tremendously proud and pleased with this Astrodome at Houston, and it just defies uh, description. But let me say before we get back to uh, Jerry Coleman and Joe Garagiola and Phil Rizzuto and their comments, that uh, we're going to be on TV from down here. And that'll be 2.30 New York time, uh, Sunday afternoon. And uh, you'll not only get to look at it, but you'll see it at its critical time when the glare is at its height and uh, gives the outfielders fits. There has been so much written about the stadium. There are so many figures that tonight um, we four are just uh, chatting, trying to give you some of the human side of it and the impression, because if we uh, throw these figures at you, you'll just be uh, deluged. I don't think anybody can comprehend them. In fact, you've got to look at it uh, to try and comprehend it, then I don't think you can. Now, let's see. Um, Garagiola's got another mic. He's over there between Rizzuto and Coleman, and uh, you ball players are carrying on. What about this infield grass? Well, uh, Red, uh, we were all down there, and it's a very fine texture of grass. It's not thick at all like the grass back north or in any of these regular baseball fields. And uh, the ball seems to skip off the grass. You don't get a true hop off it. And uh, I think they'll solve that problem, too. Right now it's a little deep. I think they could lose a ball out in left field. Well, Phil, uh, going back many years ago, I started professionally on a skin infield, and... Um, I think you're going to find almost the same effect here with this very fine grass, as you mentioned. But to me, the color is beautiful from here. Our old friend from uh, New York who is appearing here at Houston at the Shamrock, Julius La Rosa, is now being announced on the PA to sing the national anthem with the ball players standing along the respective foul lines. sometime because I imagine that um, he didn't feel very big standing out there on center field and looking up at his Astro Dome and hearing those uh, loudspeakers bounce back as he sang the anthem. The ball players uh, are going back to the dugouts. The uh, Vista's dugout, which is occupied by the Yankees tonight, is on the third base side. And, of course, that means the first base dugout is for the home club, uh, the Astros. By the way, Phil, what about these dugouts? They are the biggest dugouts uh, in baseball or football or whatever you want to call it. And uh, Harry Smith gave us an interesting story about that. Harry said that the reason the dugouts are so big is that they had so many ticket requests for seats in back of the dugout. Pretty good way to sell seats. Well, I don't think they got any trouble selling seats down here, Phil, because uh, uh, this is sort of a patriotic crusade to buy seats down here for uh, four or five years. Apparently. That's right, Red. Uh, to get those sky view uh, up on the ninth level seats and those special rooms in the back, uh, you've got to take them for five years. I would say it's the most expensive uh, 
demonstration of status seeking I've encountered lately. <laughs> You're right, Red. What about this fellow in that uniform going out there on the ground, Keith? Yeah, isn't that amazing? They're dressed just like the, almost like the astronauts are dressed when they go into that space capsule. I think they call them Earthmen. And the uh, ushers are called Astroettes. Everything in keeping with the motif of this beautiful dome stadium. But you know what I think we better do, Mr. Rosudo? What's that? There is still going to be a ball game. You know, after all it's said and done, as Shakespeare said, the play's the thing, and the ball players are going to play it. How about the batting orders? All right, Red. And a surprise starter for the Yankees tonight, and the fans are very happy. Mickey Mantle leading off in left field. Bobby Richardson batting second, playing second base. In right field, hitting third, Roger Maris. Joe Pepitone batting cleanup at first base. The shortstop, Tony Kubek, batting fifth. Tommy Tresh hitting sixth in center field. Fleet Boyer will be at third base batting seventh. Doing the catching hitting eighth, Johnny Blanchard. And young Mel Stottlemyre will be pitching and batting ninth. For the Houston Astros, it'll be Joe Morgan leading off at second base. Al Spangler in left field batting second. Rusty Staub batting third in right field. Big Walt Bond batting cleanup playing first base. At third base batting fifth, Bob Aspromonte. Little Jimmy Wynn in center field hitting sixth. Bob Lillis, the shortstop, batting seventh. Ron Brand will be doing the catching, hitting eighth. And the big right-hander, Dick Farrell, will be pitching and batting ninth. Those are the lineups, Red. Well, friends, they're uh, giving lineups over the PA. And, of course, uh, everything about uh, the Astrodome is just astronomical in the way of facts, figures, and expenses. But we want to talk about the scoreboard because it's being lighted and numbers of the players and their positions are going up now. Uh, this scoreboard is 474 feet long, and it costs $2 million, which they tell us is more than the old uh, outdoor 32,000-seat Colts Stadium is worth. There are eight technicians out there on the scoreboard, and uh, when one of the home team uh, fellows hits a home run, I want to see it, because I understand that for a minute... They're going to throw in a show that's going to use 50,000 colored lights, and they're going to have cowboys and uh, longhorn steers and uh, American and Texas flags and rockets and uh, the players' picture. This will be uh, better than um, out on the south side of Chicago, won't it, Phil? <laughs> it sure will, Red. It's going to be exciting. I hope somebody hits one in. Now we have uh, managers Keane and Harris giving their batting orders uh, to the four umpires at home plate. By the way, the Astros are going to be a pretty well-worn-out ball club when they open the season Monday afternoon against the Phillies because they're playing the Yankees tonight, the Orioles tomorrow afternoon, the Yankees tomorrow night, the Yankees Sunday afternoon, and the Orioles Sunday night. That's just five exhibition games between now and supper time or bedtime uh, Sunday evening. Then they open Monday. Otherwise, they haven't got much of a program ahead of them. <laughs> And um, Jerry Coleman came up with a priceless remark that he got from Lumen Harris. And Harris said it with a straight face that the only reason they're playing these five exhibition games in two and a half days is because uh, the Astros have two open dates next week in the league. <laughs> now they're discussing ground rules, and I don't know what they can be. There's only one ground rule that's any different. Somebody should hit one up against the girder or the roof of the Astrodome, the ball's in play just where it falls. And um, as Garagiola and Rizzuto and uh, Coleman told you, that Pedro Ramos, who was trying to, did hit a girder up about third base. Now, the Astros and their home whites go out to take the field, and you can have a home crowd reaction. We are interested in the sound, and you may be, because one of the acoustical problems of great magnitude was what would be the effect of a crowd of approximately 50,000, as we have that tonight, uh, on uh, the decibels. In other words, what's it going to do? Is it going to reverberate, re-echo? And they have tried to uh, soft pedal some of the sound in here. And also, they say that the more people you have in, the less trouble you'll have with the crowd because it, uh, human beings in their clothes are supposed to be absorbent. So we'll see. Anyhow, big uh, Dick Farrell is out there on the mound. The four umpires 
We have Mel Steiner of the National League, back of the plate. S-T-E-I-N-E-R. Then we have Larry Knapp of the American League at first base. Stan Landis of the National League is at second. Al Salerno of the American League is at third. These National League umpires are going to, I think, go to bed just as soon as they can get out of the Sunday night game because they've got to work all five of them. The two American League umpires, um, I think they're only working the Yankee game, is my understanding. And, um, well, maybe they're going to work, uh, no, they, they may. It depends on whether Baltimore brings umpires or not. In fact, it's hard to find out about umpires and ball players because everything has been directed at this Astrodome. The umpires and the managers are standing off to one side and they're sort of waiting. There has been an air of expectancy all around uh, Houston today that President Johnson might come at the last moment. He's supposed to be in Texas for the weekend, but he has not arrived as yet. Keane and Farrell are talking with the umpires. They're looking around again, so it could be ground rules they're discussing once more. The dimensions are very fair. They're 340 down the lines, 390 up the alley. That's in left center and right center. And 406 to straightaway center field. We have six decks where people are sitting. There is a massive lower deck. Then you come up uh, to, well, everything is cantilevered. There is not an obstructed view here. You have six decks up, and on the top deck, that's where those expensive uh, boxes are. They start at $15,000. The umpires are taking their positions. Farrell on the mound. Back of the plate is Ron Brand. Walter Bond is at first base. The second baseman is Joe Morgan. The shortstop is Bob Lillis. Castro is out with a broken big toe. The third baseman is Bob Aspermani. In the outfield for the Astros, they get ready for their first one at the Astrodome. Spangler in left. The center fielder is Wynn, and the right fielder is Rusty Stahl. First up is Mickey Mantle who worked out tonight and convinced his manager, Johnny Keane, who, by the way, is back home in Houston, that he could play and for a while, anyhow. Mantle hitting left-handed against right-handed Farrell, takes a pitch uh, low. Wait a minute. I don't think that pitch counts. Yes. It's the first, when it is the uh, first official pitch. Um, catcher Brand goes over and takes the ball to Kenny Smith, the director of the Hall of Fame at Cooperstown. So that ball goes to Cooperstown, New York. It is official. It is ball one. That was planned in advance, of course. So now Cooperstown has the first official baseball used. Now the second pitch. Mantle swings, and there's the first base hit. A line single up the middle in the center field. So Mickey Mantle, who now makes his home in Texas, singles through the middle in the center and runs rather carefully down to first base. Mickey has had uh, full muscle in his leg. Keane put him in the number one spot so that he can get up uh, as many times as possible before he leaves the game. He is not expected to play very much. So Mantle at first, Bond comes over to take the bag against him. We have no score, this is just the start. There's Bobby Richardson, right hand hitting second baseman. Pitches low inside, ball one. There is no difficulty in seeing the pitches. There is supposed to be no difficulty in seeing the baseball at all at night. There is no light coming down from the dome. Richardson takes a strike. One and one. Mantle at first. Vern Benson coaching at first base for the Yankees. Frank Crosetti over at third. Farrell in position. Big right-hander delivers. And Richardson hits the slow ground ball to short. Over to second base. One. The throw to first base. is not in time. Mantle is an easy force. He can't run. That's apparent. You can see it. That is, you can't run uh, rapidly. Mantle is forced, short to second. Richardson at first base. The relay wasn't close. That was short stuff, Lillis. Over to second baseman Morgan. One down. And Roger Murray stepping in. Outfield swings toward right a step. The first Major League indoor baseball game in history is on. Farrell right-handed, pitches high outside, ball one. Maris hits left-handed, as you know. 
There is absolutely uh, no motion of the air, no breeze, no wind current. The temperature is constant. Farrell's pitch is swung on and missed. That was a curveball that had a decided break. Phil, have you noticed that uh, there's as much break on the ball as normal? Well, I haven't noticed, but I talked to the pitchers, and they say there are. As a matter of fact, Kenny Johnson said he gets a better knuckleball than in any other park he's ever played on in the daytime. Well, on that last curveball, uh, broke the side of it. Yes, it did. Farrell's pitch is high. Ball two, two and one. Two balls, one strike. No score, one out. Richardson at first. Maris takes low, ball three. The infield is fast. Some of the players uh, do not think that this grass, which is a particular um, strain of Bermuda, is going to make it. It's uh, pretty thin when you stand on it down the field and look at it. Maris takes outside for ball four. He walks, takes first base, which is the move to second. Joe Pepitone hit the home run and turned the ball game at Jacksonville last night around. Left-handed batter. All the ball players are tremendously excited about this ball game. All the Yankees very much impressed. Everybody was out doing batting practice, looking, pointing to this, checking that. I noticed that everybody that was free who wasn't hitting, including the pitchers, went out to the outfield to see how that fly ball looked. They were out there because the big thing is going to come in daylight. Runners at first and second, no score. The crowd's around 50. How many more than 50 depends on how many standees they let in. There's a high fly ball out into left field. Let's see, there's the ball being correctly gauged and caught. There's no trouble about that. Al Spangler made the catch. I was more interested in seeing if I could follow it. That's the first high one we've seen. And uh, it went right up against the girders, the patchwork of the girders. And it was uh, easily visible. So it, we only had a fraction of an inning, but I would say it's no problem to play at night when you do not have the light of the sun coming down the glare from overhead. But I'm most anxious to see in the afternoon. We've had a lot of the DuPont people here whose loose side it is. They had seven experts, I think, down here, and they haven't come up with an answer yet. Now we have uh, Tony Kubak taking a pitch for a call strike. Two down, no score. Kubek, a left-hand batter. Playing pretty well straight away. Swing, there's a fly ball out into straightaway center field. And let's see, left center, it is caught and easily seen by center fielder Jim Wynn. He had it under control all the way, and the ball was easily visible all the way. No runs in this threat. One hit, two left. The score at the end of half an inning at the Astrodome in Houston. The Yankees, nothing, and the Astros coming in. Now, before we have the last half of the first inning, let's pause for station identification. Richard Hayes pinch hits for Jack Sterling tomorrow morning, 6 to 10 a.m. This is WCBS and WCBS-FM, New York. Back at the Astrodome in Houston, Texas. The first Major League indoor game in history. And first up for the home team, the Astros, is Joe Morgan, the second baseman. Left-hand hitter. And young Mel Stoudemire delivers, and it's a ground ball hit down to second. Richardson eats it up over to first, and it's an easy out. Stoudemire, this time last year, was um, getting ready to start in the International League. Now here this year, he is the pitcher for the Yankees in the first uh, game here at the Astrodome. We were talking to him at noon today at the hotel downtown. And he, of course, is properly uh, appreciative of how things have happened to him so favorably and so wonderfully. This is an exciting, pivotal moment. Al Spangler, the left fielder, left-hand hitter, takes outside for ball one. No score. Never before has a ballpark generated so much excitement, so much publicity, tossed so much as this one. 
Pitch is low. Ball two, two and oh. Stoudemire, who has done the best pitching this spring of any of the Yankee hurlers. Whitey Ford goes tomorrow night, and Downing goes Sunday afternoon. There's a ball hit out in the right center field. Here's Tress coming over, makes the catch. Put out by the center fielder. Well hit line drive. Speaking of sound, I think it was rather interesting to note that you heard the crack of that bat on a well hit uh, baseball. It came out on clear, and the way we're accustomed to hearing it. Rusty Staub, the right fielder, left hand batter. The defense around toward right. Especially the Yankee outfield is swung into right. Curve ball is low, ball wide. Mantle is in left. Just how long he plays tonight remains to be seen, but he certainly wanted to get into this one. Outside for a ball. Ball two. Mantle having trouble with his leg, and Howard is having trouble with his right elbow, the area just above the right elbow, which is swollen. And uh, some uh, one diagnosis says that there's some water in the area. Staub cuts, does not get it. Two and one. Crowd reacting to the force of the swing. Blanchett is catching, and he's got a bad leg from the collision at the plate when Dennis Menke slid into him the last game with Fort Lauderdale. Well, with Howard out of there, John's got to work. There's a high fly ball out into deep right center field. Maris goes back and makes the catch right in front of Crush, who almost banged it. Well, I'd say that Roger had that one well sighted, and that is the uh, longest, highest fly ball we've had this evening. Nothing across in the score. Here at the Astrodome in Houston, at the end of the opening inning, the Yankees nothing and the Astros nothing. Okay, ready for a refreshing thought? Think about a crisp, clean, lively Valentine beer. Now, my friend, you've got the light idea. Valentine's the beer that brings on the smiles, the beer that satisfies without filling. And that crisp, clean taste is so easy to stay with. Beer after beer after beer. Okay, now you've got the idea. So now you walk right up. Wrap your hand around a Valentine for real. Crisp, clean Valentine beer gives you a smile every time. America's finest since 1840. And now the crowd is electrified, and a big picture goes up on the scoreboard. The President of the United States has arrived, and here is the bulletin. Welcome, Mr. President. It's an ovation for President Lyndon B. Johnson. And now we move into the second inning. And so I, I guess that's about uh, the full stamp of approval that you can give to the Astrodome to have the president here for the first game. And Tom Trash, up a switch hitter, takes Kirby Farrell's pitch low outside ball one. Trash hitting left-handed against the big burly right-hander of the Astros. We have no score. Turn away crowd, and a curve swung on and missed for a strike. The papers had been uh, saying and hoping. They knew that the deficit that the president would be in Texas this weekend, hoping he'd be here tonight, and he is. Pitch is high outside, ball two, two and one. It's a beautiful sight. It's unbelievably beautiful. It's a completely symmetrical ballpark. It's a fairyland. Fresh cuts and has a ball hit out to left field. Spangler coming on and makes the catch. So far, the outfielders in this uh, ninth 
edition of the game have had no problem. But yesterday, when they tried a practice game, I understand that the people in Houston cried. Just impossible for the outfielders to find the ball. Here's Cletus Boyer. Which is low. Ball one. Of course, uh, Houston will play practically all of its games at night. And how they will solve the glare problem uh, for those afternoon games that will be played remains to be seen. A bounce ball, back pass around in the center, base hit. Ground single through the middle for Boyer. Two hits now for the Yankees, two hits in the ballgame. And we have John Blanchard, the catcher. The possibility in the future for this stadium, this Astrodome, are just uh, unlimited. There'll be heavyweight fights. There'll be political conventions. The, the big things will be here. That's just bound to happen. Blanchett hits a fly ball out into center. There's wind coming in, coming in, and Jim has the catch. And we have two down. It's a Stottlemyre coming along. All the seats are sold, had been sold for weeks and weeks and weeks. Veteran hotel men who know uh, what is going on with the public were quoted in the papers today as saying that uh, this has been one of the great public weekends in the history of Houston. Only been one or two like it before. Hotels have been sold out. There's a foul back. There hasn't been a hotel room available for weeks. Of course, there's no problem now about whether it's going to rain or not. Sotomayor hits a high fly ball into short center. Wind coming in. That's a second base. Wait, wind the same field. It stays on it. Makes the catch. Third out. No run. One hit, one left. Score. At the end of an inning and a half. The Yankees nothing and the Astros nothing. Friends, you want to see something interesting? Tell you what you do. Drive into your neighborhood Flying A service station real soon. And look at the worried faces of those Flying A service men. They look worried because they really are worried about their customers' cars. And if you look closely, the chances are you'll see a little grease on their hands. And that's because they worry where the grease is. But the only time a Flying A man isn't worrying about your car is when he's filling your tank with gasoline. He never has to worry when he's pumping Flying A because it's already been worried to perfection. So switch to Flying A. Enjoy the peace of mind that comes with knowing someone else really worries about your car as much as you do, maybe more. And like they say at Flying A, when it comes to your car, who do we worry? At Flying A, we worry. At Flying A, we worry about your car. At Flying A, we worry more than anyone else. We worry much more by far when it comes to your car. Who do we worry? Number 23, the first base from Walter Bond. The first base from Walter Bond. We'll be first up to the Astros, then the third base from Bob Astromati, and then the center fielder Jim Wynn, who just made those two putouts. No score as we go into the last half of the second inning. Mel Stottlemyre, who is down to pitch the second game of the season, whether it is at Minnesota or California. Fountain is to pitch the opener, then Stottlemyre. Vaughn, the left hand hitter, hits at the first pitch, it's a slow roller up to first base. Pepperton fields it, steps on the back for the unassisted out. Stoudemire was over there if Joe had wanted to uh, feed the ball to him, but Pepitone could make the play on Eddie. So Bond is out. One down. Third baseman Bob Ascomati. It's right-handed. Stepping in. After this series of Houston and the Astrodome, the Yankees uh, open Monday at Minnesota, then move on to Los Angeles and come into Kansas City. And a home at uh, the stadium, the big ballpark, 21st. Astromani takes low outside. Breaking ball, ball one. Right-handed delivers. It has a high fly, head out into left center field. Trash is coming on. 
He's under it. I believe that's the highest one that was up for. Tom uh, gave no evidence of any trouble in sighting it. But in the afternoon, it's a different deal. Jim Wynn stepping in. Right-hand hitter. He's fast. Stoudemire's pitch. Curve over for the strike. In two innings, a great deal of the excitement that was generated by the opening of this Astrodome has now been diverted to the play of the ball game. Yes, this is a beautiful stadium, but the key to the baseball interest in Houston is not forever going to be this stadium. It's ultimately going to have to be the ball club. As Mr. Shakespeare said so cogently a short time ago, the play is the thing. The theater is important, the physical theater. But still, is what's on the stage. It's what's going to make the people want to sit in the seats Foul back. Strike two. Stoudemire, very calmly about his task. Pitches low outside for a ball. One and two. Whitey Ford pitches tomorrow night. Al Downing goes Sunday. And this is the starting pitching rotation for the season. Downton, Stoudemire, Ford, Downing. Strike three, swing at the curveball. So, that's that. And the score at the end of two here at the Astrodome in Houston... The Yankees nothing, and the Astros nothing. And what's the score in your department, Phil? Well, well, what? Well, uh, still can't get over this stadium. I'm sitting here with my mouth open, but a reminder that the third annual Yankees Mets Mayor's Trophy Sandlot Benefit Game has been scheduled for Monday night, May the 3rd at Yankee Stadium. Reservations are being taken now at all the Yankee ticket outlets, including Yankee Stadium, Grand Central Station, the Port Authority Bus Terminal, and Schraff's Restaurant. Tickets will be printed up immediately and will be available for actual over-the-counter sale in a couple of weeks. Mail orders being accepted now at Yankee Stadium with no advance in ticket prices. Box seats 350, reserve seats 250, and 25 cents for mailing and handling. And don't forget, as in the past, all proceeds of this game will go to all the Sandlot baseball programs in the metropolitan area. And the complete Yankee share will be turned over to New York Yankees Foundation Incorporated. So help the kids out and the greatest Sandlot district of New York. That's it, Red. Now I have uh, Nick Farrell. They call him Turk. Where's 13? He's ready to pitch to Mickey Mantle, who gets the big hand of all the ball players. Mantle began his first indoor Major League ball game with a single in the first inning. Mickey is switcher batting left-handed. Takes the high inside curve. Phil, I'm not a mind reader, but I bet you Mantle wants to be the first ball player to hit one in the seats. I don't doubt it, Red. He looks ready up there. You think that's what he's thinking? Yep. Did you talk to him? No. You really are giving these full answers, you know, it's pear well, shaped tones. <laughs> I can just see the determination in his stance. You know, sometimes in spring games, he'll just be up there loose and relaxed, but he's bearing down now. Well, let's see what he does. He has a favoring count, two balls, no strikes. Farrell delivers. Mantle swings, and there's a foul out of play. That's two and one. Mickey went out in the outfield during batting practice and worked on his leg. When Manager Keane came out this afternoon late, Mano was not going to play. Then Mickey said, let me see how the leg responds. And he told Keane later, I'd like to start. So Keane put him in and put him in the number one spot. So here's Mickey for his second at bat. Swings as a ground ball to second. He throws over to first. Fumble, fumble, and they finally threw him out. If Mano had been able to have run at nearly half his normal pace, he'd have beaten the play. Second baseman Joe Morgan had to pick up that ball about three times. But he finally got him and threw him out. So we have one down. Top of the third, no score. And Bobby Richardson hit into a force after Mantle's uh, opening single. Bobby wearing the number one. I feel straight away. Richardson takes inside on his hands. Ball one. Presetti pacing along, coaching at third. Brent Benson 
Over at first. Right-handed delivers, and there's the ground ball. Hit straight to second. Morgan up with it. Over to first in time. He played this one flawlessly, and we have two up. Roger Morris walked in the first inning. Bill, would you think that Roger would like to be the first ball player to put one up in the seats at the afternoon? I think he's uh, another guy that can do it, and I'd love to see him do it. Right? What I'm trying to get from you is how do these players think? Are they are they conscious of the situation? Oh, definitely, Red. You get in a new park, uh, you feel good, and as you say, it'd, it'd be nice to be known as the first one to hit one in the seats for a home run here. Maris cuts and misses at the curveball. Strike one. Two out, top of the third. I feel shaded toward right. The changeup is low. Ball one. One and one. One ball and one strike. Right hand that works. And Maris hits a high fly ball to straightaway deep center field. Jim Wynn waiting. Makes the catch. And it is one, two, three. Score and off two and a half. The Yankees nothing and the Astros nothing. I changed for good taste. Good taste? Mm Mm-hmm. I changed to Winston and I changed for good. When I changed to Winston, I changed for good. Cause I got good taste like I knew I would. Winston tastes good like it should. Change to Winston and change for good. Cause Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. Change to Winston and change for good. For good rich taste every time. For up front in the tobacco end, Winston packs Filter Blend, an exclusive blend of fine tobaccos selected to give you the best taste in filter smoking. Enjoy America's best-selling, best-tasting filter cigarette by far. Winston tastes good like it should. Change to Winston and change for good. Cause Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. Now we carry on with the first Major League indoor ball game, and to uh, give you the play-by-play as we head into the last half of the third inning, no score game, Phil Rizzuto. Thank you, Red, and Bob Lillis, right-hand batter, leading off. He's choking way up on that bat. Saddlemeyer's pitch is in there, strike one call. Well, Love Harris was saying this Lillis is quite a man to have in your squad. He can play any infield or outfield position and catch if need be. Good man to have around. The next pitch, a ground foul outside of first. Strike two. On deck, the catcher, Ron Brand. Miss Lillis chokes up more than I do, and just about as much as Jerry Coleman used on the bat. There's a ground ball to third. Boy, is up with it. Nice play. Throw to first in time as Fleet came up with that short hopper. One out, and here's Ron Brand, who has taken over the number one receiving job on the Houston Astros. No score in the bottom of the third inning. Big crowd to see this ball game. The pitch is a curveball outside, ball one. Stottlemyer goes back to the rosin bag. Gets the sign from Johnny Blanchard. His pitch is lying to right center field. Could be extra bases. That's going to go back to the wall. And Brand is around first, looking for second. He's around second, and he's going to be in with a stand-up triple. And they're waving him in. No, they hold him up at the last second. Ron Brand hit a streamer up the alley in right center field. Maris ran it down to the wall. His throw in got by Richardson. Kubek knocked it down, and Brand, coming around third, was going to go, but
But Jim Busby, coaching at third for the Astros, held him up, and it's a good thing he did because Kubek made a perfect throw to the plate. Coaching at first for Houston, Jimmy Adair. Boyer now comes over to talk with Mel Stottlemyre. The batter will be Turk Farrell, the pitcher, who wears uniform number 13. One of the few ball players who is not superstitious. Farrell, a right-hand batter. The Yankee infield is pulled in for a possible play at the plate. No score here in the bottom of the third. Stottlemyre delivers. It's a ground ball. Hits the second. Richardson is up with it. Holds the runner at third. Throws to first for the out. And that was a rough hop that Bobby had a field, but he made the play. So now it's two out, and here's Joe Morgan, the leadoff batter, who bounced to second base his first time up. Stottlemyre had retired the first seven Astros to face him before Brand triple a deep right center. Morgan's a left-hand batter. He's a little guy, a lot of power and a lot of speed. Stole 47 bases last year in the minor leagues. Boyer is way in at third. Here's the windup. Pitch to Morgan. Swing and a miss. Strike one. Nellie Fox said there were two things that uh, made him decide to retire. One was his kid Joe Morgan, and the other was the trouble with the light here on fly balls. Nellie is now a coach for the Houston team. Here's the next pitch. Low inside. Nice play by Blanchard. He had to go far to his right on one knee. One ball, one strike, two out. No score here in the biggest air-conditioned room uh, in the country. You need a sweater here tonight. The 1-1 pitch. Ground ball to first. Pepitone is up with it. Races to the bag for the unassisted putout. So Stottlemyre gets out of a real jam there for Houston. No runs. One hit, no Yankee errors, one man left. And at the end of three full innings, it's the Yankees nothing and the Astros nothing. This game is being brought to you by a neighborhood Flying A service station dealer. Now you should get to know the men at Flying A. They're a real friendly bunch of car worriers. They worry more about your car than anyone else, maybe even more than you do. And the more they worry, the less you have to. And like they say at Flying A, when it comes to your car, ooh, do we worry. Red? Phil, you mentioned that it was cold in here, you could use a sweater. Uh, now that we've gone three innings and we are getting the effect of the air conditioning and how chilly it is, uh, what effect do you think you'll have physically on the ball players, especially the pitchers? Well, I think that uh, down on the field, it might not be quite as bad uh, as it would be in this area. And, uh, of course, if they cool off too quickly, there's going to be problems with sore arms. And uh, there are, by notice, there are blowers that do blow that air down on the field. I imagine once they get in the dugout, I don't know about the dugouts, whether they're getting any benefit from the air conditioning, but... It could present a problem, Red. Well, I understand they have eight fellows uh, that are working all the time on the air conditioning. And, of course, the hot air, which rises normally, goes out. Uh, they have uh, a vent up in the very center of this dome, which lets it out. And the cold air keeps coming from down below on the playing field. Well, that will make a problem. And as you say, Red, uh, very observing, Mel Stottlemyre put his jacket on as soon as he came in. Well, I noticed that Farrell put his on as soon as he uh, went back when he was retired. All right, that will be interesting to watch uh, how this thing develops with the pitches and whether there will be a, a series of sore arms or stiff arms or stiff backs. Could be a very important factor. Here's Joe Pepitone. Joe fly to left field his first time at bat. No score in the top of the fourth. Turk Farrell delivers and Pepitone takes a curve over strike one call. for this many people uh, it is very clear here the air conditioning must be working real well to draw all the smoke out there's a foul going back into the crowd not a play well as you said before Phil there's a constant exhaust at the very center the top of this dome and I imagine it would fly a kite if you were up there oh I didn't realize that we uh, from our vantage point here we can't quite see the top of the dome but <laughs> it's up there <laughs> just want to take a look and make sure it 
Farrell's next pitch, a curve hit to deep center field. Wynn is going back. He's back on the running track and makes the catch. Ball hit almost 400 feet in deep center. One away. And it brings up Tony Kubek, who'll fly to center field his first time up. See, Warren Giles is here tonight, Red, and his son, uh, Bill Giles, is head of public relations for uh, the Houston Astros. Mm -hmm. And he's busy taking you fellas all around on the tour, isn't he? He sure is. Did a good job, too. Here's Farrell's first pitch to Kubek. And you know what he also told me? He said that they had requests for 100,000 tickets that they could have sold for this game tonight. I know. It um, set the state on fire. Yep. The next pitch is a little outside. One-on-one to Tony Kubek. I guess the eyes of the whole nation, maybe the whole world, are on Houston tonight. Boy, this is... Red said a fantastic story. Can't say enough about it. A fly ball down the left field line. Al Spangler moving hard over to his right, still digging hard. Makes the catch just in bad territory. Spangler makes a nice running catch. Retired Kubek is two out. Nobody on. Here's Tommy Trench, who lined the left field in the second inning. Jimmy Wynn in center field has five putouts already. And Spangler has three in left field. There's a high pop-up to the shortstop, Bob Lillis, on the edge of the outfield grass, takes it for the third out. Three up, three down for the Yankees. And at the end of three and a half, it's the Yankees nothing and the Astros nothing. At Flying A, we worry. At Flying A, we worry about your car. At Flying A, we worry more than anyone else. We worry much more by far. We worry about your crankcase. Hires at carburetor. And belt muffler. Voltage regulator. There comes a time, however, when our worries fade away. You know it by our smiles when we're pumping flying gay. Between our smiling and our gasoline, there is a real connection. We've got the only gasoline that's worried to perfection. At Flying A we worry, at Flying A, more than anyone else by far. When it comes to your car, ooh, do we worry. We get ready to go in the bottom of the fourth inning here at the Astrodome in Houston, Texas. And Al Spangler will lead off. Spangler line to center field his first time up. The Yankees have two hits, both singles, one by Mantle, one by Boyer. The Astros have one hit, a long triple by Ron Brand. A lot of the uh, Houston ball players are making their home here now, coming from other parts of the country where they formerly lived. This city, I was going to call it a town, has really grown up and really developed since the last time I was here. Yankees used to barnstorm through here way back. Stottle Myers pitch, a ground ball to the right side, it's through, a base hit to right field for Spangler. And he golfed a low curveball, timed it beautifully. Hit it between first and second of right field. Here's Rusty Stop. Rusty flying to right field. Duke Carmel and Bob Schmidt are loosening up down the left field line for the Yankees. Schmidt the catcher. Carmel just about put him any place. Pitch to Stop. Ground ball to Richardson. Bobby up with it. Goes to Kubek for one. Back to first. Double play. And Bobby caught that ball right against his chest. But he stayed with it, a fine double play on a tough chance. Second is short to first, two out. And here's big Walter Bond, who's wearing the brightest red or orange golf glove on his right hand I've ever seen. Bond bounced at first base in the second inning. No score, bottom of the fourth inning. Stottlemyre delivers, it's lying to left center for a base hit. Stretch in, Mantle after it, it gets by Mantle, rolling to the wall, Bond is around first. 
And holds up at second. The ball gets by, and Bond is coming in at third base. That ball got by both Kubek and Richardson. And let's see what they're going to give him. Double and an error six. A double and an error charge to Kubek. Up the alley in left center field. Bond really hit a low screamer that took off between Mantle and Tresh and rolled all the way to the wall. And it hit the wall so hard that Mantle on the rebound fired the ball in and Bond was standing at second when the ball got by Kubek. Here's Aspromonte. Bob fly to center field in the second inning. Stottlemyre into the windup. His pitch low and outside ball one. Aspromonte was the best fielding third baseman in the National League last year. Made only 11 errors all year. Holds that bat right down on the end. The pitch swing and a miss at a curve. One and one. On deck, Jim Wynn. Red Bob had told you the President of the United States, Lyndon B. Johnson, here tonight with Mrs. Johnson. The curve hit on the ground to short. Kubek up with it. Fires to Pepitone in time. And for Houston, in the bottom of the fourth, no runs, two hits, one Yankee error, one man left. And at the end of four full innings, it's the Yankees nothing and the Astros nothing. You could win big in the Flying A $250,000 Big League Sweepstakes. Grand prize, $10,000 cash now, plus expense paid trips to all 1965 World Series games for you and five friends, as guests of Jerry Coleman, former Yankee great. Over 3,900 other prizes, including Ford Mustang convertibles, RCA television sets, Waltham wristwatches, portable transistor radios, complete sets of Baseball Hall of Fame statuettes. There's a new Flying A drawing every week for six weeks. Stop at your Flying A service station. Fill out an entry blank. Nothing else to do or buy. You could win big in the Flying A $250,000 Big League Sweepstakes. See your Flying A dealer for full details today. And now Flying A announces a winner of a Waltham Sportsman watch in the $250,000 Big League Sweepstakes. It's Dennis O'Brien of 125 Alta Avenue, Yonkers, New York. Congratulations, Dennis O'Brien. And right now we pause for station identification. Richard Hayes pinch hit for Jack Sterling tomorrow morning, 6 to 10 a.m. This is WCBS and WCBS-FM, New York. We have a change by the official score. Instead of charging Kubek with an error on Mantle's relay throw in, it's charged to Bobby Richardson. So a double for Walt Bond and an error charge to Richardson. Cleet Boyer takes a pitch high and inside ball one. Boyer bounced a single up the middle his first time at bat. There's no score here in the top of the fifth inning. Next pitch low inside. Ball two, two and nothing. On deck, Johnny Blanchard. Next pitch hit on the ground. Foul outside of third. Al Salerno had to do a little dance to get out of the way of that ground ball. After a while, the, when the game is underway, you kind of forget that you're in this beautiful dome stadium. But it's there every time you look up. The eighth wonder of the world, they call it. There's a foul back out of play. And any of you fans who are interested in seeing parts of the stadium will be televising Sunday back to New York. Pitch is strike three call. Boyer called out on strike. That's the first strikeout for Dick Farrell. Brings up Johnny Blanchard, who flies to center field in the second inning. Changeup is popped up. Ron Brand, the catcher, coming back. 
and makes the catch. There's not too much room in foul territory any place in this ballpark, but there was just enough for Brand to make that catch of the foul pop. Two out. And let's see, Mel Stottlemyre scheduled to be the next batter. And Stottlemyre is coming out. Mel flied to center field in the second inning. The first pitch is low ball one. The Yankees and the Astros in Houston, Texas. The pitch is hit down the right field line. Coming over fast, Rusty Staub, and makes the catch in foul territory. Three up, three down for the Yankees, and the score now at the end of four and a half. The Yankees nothing, the Astros nothing. I changed for good taste. Good taste? Yep, I changed to Winston, and I changed for good. When I changed to Winston, I changed for good, cause I got good taste like I knew I would. Winston tastes good like it should. Change to Winston and change for good, cause Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. Change to Winston and change for good. For the good taste that comes from Winston's Filter Blend tobaccos, specially selected for the best taste in filter smoking, enjoy America's best-selling, best-tasting filter cigarette. When I changed to Winston, I changed for good, cause I got good taste like I knew I would. Winston tastes good like it should, change to Winston and change for good, cause Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. Getting ready to go now in the bottom of the fifth inning and getting ready to go. A great pair, Jerry Coleman and Joe Garagiola. Thank you, Phil, as we move into the bottom of the fifth inning. No score in this ball game at the Astrodome, Houston, Texas. The Yanks and the Houston Astros. Scoreless duel. Jim Wynn, the center fielder, moving in. And we have had a ball tonight. What a magnificent ballpark. Absolutely magnificent. Here's young Jim Wynn who struck out in the second inning facing Mel Stottlemyre. The first pitch check swing foul behind the plate. Strike one. A packed house and this has to be the social event here in Houston of the decade. They have everybody here including the President of the United States Lyndon Johnson. John Connolly, Texas governor. Pitch to win as a curveball. It breaks inside. One and one. And you know, Joe, it takes a while to associate yourself with all these new gimmicks I got up there on that scoreboard. Hey, that uh, message board they got here is really something. It delivers commercials between innings. All right, here's Stottlemyre to win. Low and inside. Two and one the count. Two balls, one strike. They have a unique thing here at the Astrodome, the bullpen and the dugout are one and the same. In other words, the men in the bullpen are sitting in the dugout. And that's a first. Next pitch to win. Swung on a miss. Strike two. Two and two the count. Stottlemyre with good sinking stuff. No score in the game. We're in the bottom of the fifth. The Astros with three hits. They have two extra base hits, a double and a triple. The Yankees, two hits. Both of those of the single variety. Two and two, the count on win. Right-hand batter hits a ground ball toward third. Boyer can't get it deep in the hole as Kubek, the long throw in time on a fast man and a close play. And listen to those Houston Astros fans here yell at that umpire. Larry Knapp at first. That was a fine play by Kubek deep in the hole to get the speedy Jim win. Now here's Bob Lillis who bounced to third in the third inning. Lillis grew up in the Dodger organization and then went to the old Houston Colts in the expansion a few years back. There's a ground ball to short. Kubek, half hop, juggles it, throws the first in time. Two down. Tony almost lost the handle on that one. Nothing wrong with Kubek's arm, Jerry, the way he threw that one. Joe, it started last night in uh, Jacksonville and he had a play deep in the hole and he's got the mustard. 
Ron Brand, the catcher, who tripled to right center in the third inning. He's got one of the three Houston hits here. Mel Stottlemyre for the Yankees. Wines, deals, strike call. Plate umpire is Mel Steiner of the National. Larry Knapp of the American at first. Stan Landis at second of the National. And Al Salerno of the American at third. Stottlemyre again. The one-strike pitch on the way to Brand. There's a high fly ball to straightaway center. Tresh gauging this one. Gets under it and takes it. So this ball game moving right along. Three up and three down for the Astros here in the bottom of the fifth. And after five full, it's the Yanks nothing, the Astros nothing. And as the ground crew comes on the field to give the infield a little treatment, <laughs> here's Joe Garagiola. A big chuckle goes out because they're dressed in bright orange with the helmets on, looking like the astronauts. And I know they were kidding before the game, saying, is everything A-OK or all signals go? And they were all answering, yeah, I got my rake, I got my shovel and what have you. They are really a colorful group as they get out there. Say one thing, they are staying right with this astro uh, motif they've built up here. They're going for uh, a big promotion with the opening day here with the Phillies. Of course, everybody will be wanting to come out here. And talking about opening day, remind our good Yankee fans that opening day at the stadium will be April 21st. The Minnesota Twins. And needless to tell you, you talk about some power. Those Twins have it with Killebrew and Allison and Oliva and Hall, Batty. There'll be some special pregame opening ceremonies, the 64 pennant awards, the American League pennant raising, and Johnny Keane's American League debut, debut at uh, Yankee Stadium. And you know, Jerry, it's great to be in this ballpark, but <laughs> one of the Houston ball players, but it's so uh, appropriate, let's use that word, when he said, we got everything but players. Well, they do have a shall we say, a growth problem on their hands. But at the same time, uh, you know, a ballpark can help a ball club. It can help them because, for one thing, it's taking the heat off these players. Everybody's talking about the park and nobody's wrapping them. Here's Mickey Mantle coming on, leading off of the Yankees in the first inning, singled up the middle for the base hit, the first one ever here in the Astrodome, and then bounced to second. He's one for two. First game that he's played since pinch hitting in San Juan a week ago, and he swings and misses at a fastball strike one. Turk Farrell, big six foot four inch right hander, acquired from the Philadelphia Phillies. Or he wasn't acquired from the Phillies, but he started his major league career with the Phillies. He's ready again. The fastball is hit to straightaway center field, moving back. Jim Wynn back to the wall, and that ball is out of here. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yes, it's a home run. That ball is in the center field seat. And listen to the fans. How do you like that? Mickey Mantle, the first man ever to add a home run here in the Astrodome and did these fans get a kick out of it. How about it, Joe? Well, that Red Barber wanted it. Red, you got it. That was your man. He really hit it and everybody got excited and the message board had a big sign which said, Kill. There's Bobby Richardson who half swing called for a strike on a high fastball and it's strike one. And to a man, the entire Yankee ball club got up and shook Mantle's hand. In other words, they recognize the significance and the historical factor behind that home run. Here is Richardson taking a strike, and it's nothing in two. So Mickey Mantle makes history here in Houston, Texas, the first man ever to hit one in the Astrodome, and it's the Yankees one, the Astros nothing, as Richardson flies to medium left, one away. Jerry, they talk about the ball doesn't carry and it doesn't do this. <laughs> when you put a charge into it, it's going to go. Well, you know, we, we hesitated there momentarily because the third base umpire was raising his hands for two and the second base umpire was giving the home run signal. So we were caught in between and Stan Landis at second base won the contest. All right, here's Roger Maris who takes a fastball in there for a strike. Yankees won. Astros nothing. He picked a pretty good spot to hit it, too, dead center. That's about as far as you can get. That's 406 to that fence, and about a 10-foot fence he had to get over. 
There's a high pop in the short left. Lillis going back. Spangler coming in, and Lillis calls for it for the putout. So Mantle puts the Yankees out in front, one to nothing. Top of the sixth inning. First game ever here in the Astrodome, and here's Joe Pepitone. Pepe fly to left, fly to center. And our friend Jim Wynn is practically playing back-to-back -back with that center field fence now. He has moved back about ten paces. Here's the first pitch to Pepitone. Loud foul down the right field side, and that ball is hit sharply and hard into the first mezzanine above the lower stand. See, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six tiers of stands as I see them. And on top, the plush box seats. Pepitone takes high and outside, one and one. One ball, one strike, two down. I think that top is a different time zone. I know it's a different expense account. That's <laughs> some plush seats. One one pitch to Pepe is hit into center field, base hit. Pepitone hitting it about the trademark, not too hard. Pulls up at first with a single to center. So the Yankees with two hits here in this inning. They lead one to nothing. Pepitone on at first with two out. Now here's Tony Kubek who flied to center and flied to left. Kubek, who, as Joe mentioned earlier, was plagued with a bad arm for a lot of the spring, has now recovered, and he is throwing that baseball. Kirk Farrell, a big right-hander, sets, delivers to Tony a curve that misses inside. Well, this Astrodome, to go along with the space research here at the center in Houston, they've got a lot of things going for them. Strongly recommend, if you get to Houston, to drop by and take a look at this park. Kubek fouls this one off. Catcher got it. One and one the count. One ball, one strike, two down. Yankees play here again tomorrow night and then Sunday afternoon and then on to Minnesota for the big opener on Monday with the Twins. Well, we're just three days away from the start of the 1965 pennant race. Here's a 1-1 pitch to Kubek. Hits it into right center, high in the air, drifting over as Jim Wynn and has a little trouble but takes it at the track. It looked like Wynn ran under the ball and then had to cut toward the wall to come up with it. For the Yankees, one run on two hits. No Astro errors. One man left on the score after five and a half. The Yankees won. The Astros nothing. Okay. Ready for a refreshing thought? Think about a crisp, clean, lively Valentine beer. Now, my friend, you've got the light idea. Valentine's the beer that brings on the smiles, the beer that satisfies without filling. And that crisp, clean taste is so easy to stay with. Beer after beer after beer. Okay, now you've got the idea. So now you walk right up. Wrap your hand around a Valentine for real. Crisp, clean Valentine beer. Gives you a smile every time. America's finest since 1840. Moving into the bottom of the sixth inning, coming on to do the hitting for the Astros, Turk Farrell, the big right-hander. Bounce to second in the third inning. He's 0 for 1. Yankees 1. The Astros, nothing. The Yanks have four hits. The Astros, three. The Yanks have made an error. Stottlemyre delivers. Farrell fouls it back. Strike one. There's another first tonight. Of course, it's an obvious one. For the first time ever, a baseball ticket has been printed without a rain check. They plan on playing them all. Farrell takes outside from Stottlemyre. One ball, one strike. See, Dick Farrell pitched for the Phillies from 56 to 58, and then for the Dodgers for half a year, and then on to Houston in 62. Two and one the count. Farrell takes a fastball. It moves away. 
The Yankees won, Astros nothing. The last half of the sixth inning, and this ball game zipping right along. Stottlemyre again, the right-hander, delivers. Farrell takes inside. It's three and one. Mel just missing those corners. Farrell's a big guy, 6'4", 220. Where is the number 13, as you heard earlier? 3-1 pitch in there, full count. Three balls, two strikes, nobody out, nobody on. Last of the sixth, Yanks won, and that on Mickey Mantle's home run into the center field bleachers, the first ever here in the Astrodome. Farrell takes just outside, ball four, and draws a walk. That's the first walk given up by Stottlemyre. Farrell is asking for a jacket. This stadium, as we've been reminding you right along, is completely air-conditioned, to the point, really, where it's... Uh, Rather a little coolish if you're not active. And I talked to Lum Harris before the game, and he said, you know, this is like the old Coast League. When you finish your career, you go out there and play three years more. He's got a point. Uh, Jerry, they announced the uh, temperature in the stadium here, the Astrodome, at uh, 71 degrees. Well, that's got to help those pitchers. No more of that oppressive heat or the humidity that you run into in the dead of summer. All right, Farrell at first base, nobody out. And here's Joe Morgan, the second baseman. A two-hopper pass, Pepitone into right field. Farrell's going to try for third, and then holds up. So let's see how they rule out when they're charging Pepitone with an error. That ball hopped right over his glove. So the Astros now with runners at first and second, nobody out. Al Spangler coming on. And I don't know what we'd be looking for except the bunt, Joseph. <laughs> have to look for this guy, and you better be careful not to play around too much, because he can run. He may beat it out. Farrell at second. Morgan at first, due to the error by Pepitone. Nobody out. Yanks lead, one to nothing, last of the sixth. And this is the first big rally, the first time the Astros have had two men on since the game got underway. Spangler swings at the first pitch and fouls it back. Oh, well, that was a switch. The Yankee defense all shortened up looking for the bunt. Spangler swung at the good fastball. Now Jim Busby calls time, and we're going to have a conference between Spangler and third base coach Jim Busby. Jerry, the Yankees were so sure that he was going to bunt that Kubek was going to race Farrell for third base. And now Kubek is called off the play. He's hollering to Boyer right now. One strike the count to Spangler. Morgan moving off first, Farrell off second, Kubek running him back, and there's a bunt of beauty down the third base side, if it's there, it'll be a base hit, and Boyer's letting it roll, and the bases are loaded. Time is called, as Al Spanger dropped a slow roller that stayed about three inches bare almost to the back. You don't think that infield might be tailored to help this ball club a little bit? Well, the way these uh, Houston fans are going, Bedlam is starting to rain here at the Astrodome. Base is loaded, nobody out. Yanks leading, one and nothing, last half of the sixth, and the batter... Rusty Staub, the right fielder. Staub, fly to right, bounced into a double play, and the Yankees are playing back for two. Farrell at third, Morgan at second. Spangler at first, and the first pitch to Staub is low, and it's ball one. We've got Pete Nicholson warming up in the bullpen, and he's throwing in a hurry. Salomar running into a jam here in the sixth. Dottlemeyer, stop, fouls it off. One and one the count. Good sinker. Johnny Blanchard has been doing yeoman work behind the plate with Howard's arm a little on the tender side. John has been forced into action and has been doing a great job.
All right, Stottlemyre again gets the sign. Into the windup. The 1-1 pitch to Staub. Way outside. Two balls and a strike. And the fans here sensing that first Astro run. Starting to whoop it up. And I will say that they're whooping it up in luxury. These are some of the finest seats I've ever seen. The entire stadium has seats similar to those you find in movie houses. Here's a 2-1 pitch to stop. Ground ball. It's Pepito knocks it down. Throws to second and forces Bangor at second. Farrell comes in to score. Staub is at first. Morgan moves to third. It's a 1-1 ball game. That was a fine play by Pepitone to knock down a base hit bid by Rusty Staub. That play going from three to six, forcing Spangler at second. Farrell scores. Morgan moves to third, and it's the Yanks one and the Astros one. Staub will get credit for the RBI. Now Hal Renneth, along with Mickelson, are throwing in the Yankee bullpen. One away, and the big man, Walt Bond, coming on. He bounced to first. There's a throw to first, not in time, as Pepitone puts the tag on stop. Bond bounced to first and then doubled to right center. Big, six foot four inch, 225 pounder. He's a big guy. There's a shot to Quebec, one hop. Races to the bag for one over to first double play. That one going from six, six, three. So for the Astros, bottom of the sixth, one run on only one hit, one Yankee air, one man left in the score after six full. Yanks one and the Astros one. The next portion of this ball game will be brought to you by the R.J. Reynolds Tobacco Company, the makers of Camel, Winston, and Salem Cigarettes. Well, Joe, I saw you going through the souvenir book that the Astros so graciously gave to the press here, and uh, maybe you've got a few highlights you might bring out. Well, I was looking at some of the uh, quotes that some of the people uh, have been saying about it, Jerry. Uh, the one that sticks in my mind immediately is one that uh, Bill Dana, Jose Jimenez, said uh, he was so impressed with this uh, Astrodome. Uh, he said that if they had a cemetery behind home plate, you'd never have to leave this place. Uh, Commissioner Ford Frick was uh, very generous in his praise. Uh, but it all ran the same uh, from wow to gee whiz and oh boy. But you know one thing, uh, Jerry, uh, just watching this last inning of the uh, Astros, which I think is going to be a typical inning. This is going to be a good ballpark for them because it's a big spacious ballpark. And it's a ball, uh, ball club that's made up of a lot of singles hitters. And just that little thing of the bunt staying in fair territory is one of the little helps that a groundskeeper can give you. You got a ball club that can run and can bunt, like this Astro ball club. You tilt that foul line a little, in a little bit, and maybe you paint that uh, foul line a little bit thicker so that if the ball rolls, it kind of there's nothing wrong with it. There really isn't. And any help you can give your ball club, give it to him. And these Astros got a little bit of a break that time. And I think this ballpark is going to be perfect for them. I would have to think that the Chavez Ravine with the Dodgers playing in it might use this system, too. Same way. <laughs> All right, here's Farrell to Tresh. Hits the first pitch high in the air, coming back behind the plate and into the stand. And there goes a souvenir. What a scramble. Well, a big night here in Houston. We've said it before, and we'll say it again. One of the big events in the history of this city. The unveiling of the new Astrodome. Here's the pitch to Tresh. Takes outside. One and one the count. And it's a 1-1 ball game. Both teams have four hits. We're in the top of the seventh. The Yanks have made two errors. Farrell again, the big right-hander to Tresh. Change up. He bunts it foul at the plate. One ball, two strikes. Jerry, you've been an infielder. Uh, you've seen that uh, flat infield now, no turtle back, just the mound. Uh, what do you think? Would you like to play on it? I, I don't really think it makes a lot of difference, Joe, because most of the fields are sloped gently to the mound. I, I, re I really never noticed too much of the bump that there is in most parks. There's a hopper to second base. Morgan has it. First, one away. Tresh is out of there. To continue with that answer, Joe, I don't think that these little things are going to be of any great importance one way or the other. I think 
that the condition of the grass, if this becomes a real problem, could affect the play. And again, as we uh, know, the condition that uh, prevails here during daylight hours with that roof. That uh, dirt doesn't give you a true bounce either. It's a powdery substance. All right, here's Boyer moving in. Hits the first pitch sharply to left field and just getting it and shading his eyes from the light was the left fielder Al Spangler. And that's the first time we got an indication that those outfielders might have light trouble here. Those outfielders may end up wearing a helmet that the ground crew is wearing. Two out here. One-one ball game. Top of the seventh, and here's Johnny Blanchard. Boyer hit that ball right on the button. Blanchard flied to center and then foul to the catcher. Frank Crescetti coaching at third, Benson at first as Blanchard swings and misses strike one. Hal Wudashik is warming up, a left-hander for the Astros. Hal Reneth has discontinued, rather. He's just sitting down now. He's throwing for the Yanks. Blanchard check swing, a hopper, and bounces over third, down the line. Johnny going for two, Spangler up with it, and Blanchard is in with a double that I think surprised him more than it did the pitcher, Turk Farrell. That's the fifth Yankee hit off Farrell. Both Stottlemyre and Farrell have pitched well this evening. Farrell's given up five hits, one run. Stottlemyre, four hits and one run. And here is Stottlemyre right now, who flied to center and fouled to the right fielder down the line. Two out. Blanchard at second. Stottlemyre the batter. Farrell gets a sign from Brand, delivers, and Stottlemyre swings and misses at a good sidearm curveball. This Farrell is a hard thrower with pretty good breaking stuff, and he's a little tough on those right-handers. Big guy, 6'4", 220. The next one to Stottlemyre, another sidearm curve that missed way outside this time. One ball, one strike. We mentioned Monday, the Yanks will open in Minnesota. Play two games there, on to L.A. for two, off on Good Friday, a three-game set, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday with the A's in Kansas City, and then back to the stadium on Wednesday as Stottlemyre takes a strike right over. One ball, two strikes to Stottlemyre. April the 21st, opening day at Yankee Stadium with the Minnesota Twins. They'll be there again on Thursday, and then a weekend set all day action with the Los Angeles Angels. Stottlemyre, a hop, up the middle, base hit. Blanchard's going to try to score. Corsetti waving him in. The throw by Wynn, and Blanchard is out by 20 feet at the plate. Johnny Blanchard, he had no place to go. The catcher, Brand, had the ball when John was still 20 feet down the line. So that takes care of the Yankees here in the top of the seventh. No runs on two hits, one man left. And the score after six and a half. The Yanks won, the Astros won. Camel's real taste satisfies longer. Camel's real taste satisfies longer. Camel's real taste satisfies longer. The best taste you can get. You get tobacco taste. So rich and rare. A real taste. And that's really there. You get no fads, no fancy stuff. Real flavor with every puff. Tobacco tastes so rich and rare. A real taste that's really there. The best tobacco makes the best smoke. So get with Camel and try a real smoke. Have a Camel cigarette. In this brand new ballpark, let's have an old-fashioned station break. Richard Hayes pinch hits for Jack Sterling tomorrow morning, 6 to 10 a.m. This is WCBS and WCBS-FM, New York. Well, 
Well, after that old-fashioned station break, here comes a brand-new man to tell you all about this game, Joe Garagiola. Joseph? Okay, Jerry, it's tied up 1-1. Bob Aspromani against Mel Stottlemyre. That uh, Jim Wynn brought this crowd to its feet with a great throw to get Blanchard. Here's a fastball that misses ball one. Johnny Blanchard, in all fairness, is hobbled with a bad leg. But I tell you, he wouldn't have scored on two good legs and roller skates. That win really threw that ball. Perfect strike on the fly, and Brand caught the ball and had to wait for John. There's the strike on the outside corner. One ball and one strike. Aspromani, a good-looking hitter. This boy's a solid ball player. Holds that bat still, holds it high. Waits for the 1-1 pitch. Swings and misses in a strike two. That was a good sinker. You could see it from here. Well, we've all been talking about this ballpark, but you've never seen a busier ballpark in the stands than this one. There are vendors in bright blue coats all over this place, and people still coming in. Outside, two balls and two strikes. There's no doubt about it that they're dressed uh, as if it were a fashion show, and it's a status symbol to be here tonight on the opening of the Astrodome. And I guarantee you, that old joke came to life tonight, you know. One to one, that's the score. We haven't missed a thing, honey. Because there are some people here that will never see a ballpark again. Popped up, this one by Aspermani, and Cleet Boyer in foul territory is waiting. Foul territory and makes the catch. One out. Here is the boy who made that fine throw, Jim Wynn. He gets a nice hand from this crowd. We got a $2 million scoreboard here. One of them with the lineups on it, one of them with balls, strikes, and the current score, and one with the other games. Here's a bouncing ball, one handed grab by Boyer. And Wynn is out, two outs. So there are two away, and Bob Lillis is the hitter. 1-1's one, the score. Lillis bounced to Boyer. Bounced out. Short to first, his second time up. Chokes up on that bat, uses a heavy bat, swings down on the ball. He looks for the ground ball. He's one of these guys that three bounces in the infield, and I got a base hit. Outside, ball one. Jerry, I figured out what they call that middle one. In the scoreboard. You mean where they flash all the unusual signs and that's ads? the one. Here's a little looper right to Bobby Richardson, and it's one, two, three. They call that the autogram message board, in case you're wondering. Thank you, Joe Garagiola. <laughs> <laughs> one, two, three for the Houston Astros at the end of seven innings of play. The score here is all tied up. Yankees one and Houston one. A new pitcher for the Houston Astros, Hal Woodishick. And to lead it off for the Yankees will be Mickey Mantle and Woodishick, a left-hander. Mantle will be batting right-handed. And are you thinking like I'm thinking? Wouldn't that be something if he'd hit one right-handed? Mantle hit a home run left-handed into the center field seat for the Yankee run. He's up there now batting right-handed against Hal Woodishick. Steve Hamilton begins to loosen up for the Yankees. Looks like Hector Lopez limbering up. Low ball one. What a shake to Mantle. Here's the pitch to Mickey. It's low. It's ball two. Big Farrell pitched seven innings, gave up one run. Six hits, struck out one, and walked one. We're in the eighth inning, all tied, 1-1. One, one. Swung on and tapped foul. Mantle had a good cut at that one, but tapped it. Stayed in foul territory, so it's two balls and one strike. You know, Joe, they're talking about somebody hitting the roof of this ballpark in fair territory, which seems to be highly unlikely, but it isn't so unlikely that they wouldn't hit one of those many microphones that ring the uh, center field area out there and broadcast all the pertinent information back to the spectators. 
That could happen. Wonder if that's a ground rule, Jerry. Off the microphone's two bases. Here's the pitch to Mantle. It's a strike on the outside corner. Just did catch it. Woodishick. He doesn't throw hard. He's a nibbler. He's in and out, up and down. Here he comes with the 2-2 pitch. Curveball. And it stays low and inside. And it's a full count. No, Mantle. Three and two. Mickey went down to one knee as he took that curveball. Three balls, two strikes. One one's a score. Here is the three two pitch. Tap foul as Mickey reached for a fastball. The outside part of play, but when you get two strikes on, you just can't be that particular. Man led a home run in the sixth inning. Betting left handed into the center field seat. Houston scored their run in the sixth. Here's the three two pitch. Low ball four. He walked him. Mantle draws the base on balls. We're going to have a pinch runner now. Art Lopez will be the pinch runner for Mickey Mantle, and Mantle will get a tremendous hand as he leaves the game. Bobby Richardson is the hitter now. And Lum Harris, howling to Ron Brand to pull the third baseman, asked Romani in a little bit to watch the bunt, watch the hit and run play. Richardson will get you to thinking because he's one of those kind of guys. Bobby's going to bunt, misses it, strike one, but there's no possible play as Walt Bond really came charging from the first base position. And asked Romani, came charging from third. It's one of those spots that managers like to switch off right about here. Bobby can handle that bat. See what happens. Bobby misses again as he attempts to bunt. And two quick strikes. Looked like Bobby was trying to bunt for the base hit that time, not so much a sacrifice bunt. So it's two quick strikes on Richardson. On first base is Art Lopez, the pinch runner from Mantle. One one's the score. We're in the eighth inning. What a shake. Delivers. Low. One ball, two strikes. Yankees one. Houston one. Art Lopez leads off first base. Rusty Staub in right field is actually guarding the right field line. A lot of room in right center. Here's the pitch to Bobby. A strike call to curveball. They got him. Richardson out on strikes, and that brings up Roger Maris. Woodishick doesn't overpower you with his stuff, but he's around that plate pretty good. Maris walked in the first, fly to center, and popped up. The pitch swung on and missed strike one. The high hanging curveball, he got away from it. The pull back is. Woodishick came sidearm. The pitch. Fastball high. One ball, one strike. All that talk before the dome was complete about will a curveball curve and will a knuckleball break? Sure does seem to happen. There's a line drive right field. Rusty Stop comes in. A shoot three pitch. He got a chance for a double play to throw it. Drop. Lopez is back. Nice play by Rusty Staub. There'll be no error on that play. Staub uh, made the shoestring catch, and then on the run, flipped it to first baseman Waller Bond. It was a short hop throw, and Bond couldn't hold it, so Lopez got back. Nice play by Staub. Mid-season farm here with some of these plays. Two outs, and Joe Pepitone is the hitter. Pepe, single in the center field in the sixth inning. He's one for three. Low, ball one. He flied deep to center field in the fourth. He flied to left in the first inning. One, one, all tied up, eighth inning. Woodyshick checks Lopez at first. Here's the pitch. Swung on, a little looper. That's going to drop for a base hit in the left center field. Lopez, round second. He takes for third. As the throw goes into second, Pepitone's on with a single. It's first and third, and it's up to Tony Kubek. 
Pepitone didn't hit that ball good. Kind of hit it on the handle. One of those nice dying swans. It's nice when it's on your side. It really makes you moan when you're catching. A polite single. And now Ron Brand goes out to talk to Woodyshek. And he's just going to remind him in case of the double steal. Lopez is on at third. Pepitone is on at first. There are two outs. Kubek is flying to center field twice, and he flies to left. They play him straight away. Woodyshick checks the runners to pitch to Kubek. He tries to bunt, misses a strike one. That was really a surprise play on everybody's part. Aspermani's deep at third base, and Kubek figuring he had a base hit, and with two outs, Lopez would be breaking at the crack of the bat. The play, I'm sure, that originated with Tony. There goes Pepitone. Here's a fake throw, and Brand just holds the ball as Pepitone goes into second base. A stolen base. That's one of those stolen bases you get by going in the servant's entrance. Pepitone actually stopped to draw the throw. That's his job is to draw the throw, and if it doesn't go wildly, uh, to stay in the rundown long enough to let Lopez score. But when Brand didn't throw it, there was nothing Pepitone could do but walk to second base and pick up the uh, big stolen base. So it's a 1-1 count to Kubek. And there's strike two. Base runners are at second and third. Woodishick in relief of Farrell. Hepatone's at second. Lopez is at third. 1-1. One, one. We're all tied. Here is the 1-2 pitch. Struck him out and made him look bad. A big breaking curveball. Kubek couldn't reach it. Out on strikes. And that ends the inning. No runs. There was one hit. No errors, and two men were left on base. And at the end of seven and a half innings of play, the score here, Yankees won, the Astros won. One-one is the score here, bottom half of the eighth inning. Tremendous crowd here at the Astrodome. Governor Conley threw out the first ball, and then President Johnson was a late arrival. And they have once again reminded everybody up here the reason for the late arrival. Here is the pitch by Stottlemyre, swung on by Brand. Big hop to Boyer. He's got it. Pepitone, one out. Brand is out from Boyer to Pepitone. There was a call to the local radio station here that there was a bomb in the Astrodome. So with that bomb scare, there was a delay in the arrival of President Johnson. Until, of course, it was completely checked out. Here is Woodyshick. A strike is called. Attendance tonight, 47,876. Woodyshick takes it low and it's one ball and one strike. They give it the added footnote that that's the biggest crowd ever to attend a ball game in Houston, 47,876. All tied up here, 1-1. One, one. Stottlemyre against Woodyshek. The pitch swung on and missed. And it's strike two. The $2 million scoreboard has strike one. But the umpire with his 40 cent indicator rules. Here's the pitch outside. And two balls and two strikes. That little indicator, that's the law. That's it. You see that umpire look at his hand. That's what he's looking at. And he keeps the official count right there. Two balls and two strikes to Woody Shick. Low ball three. Full count now. Saddlemeyer ended up walking Farrell in the sixth inning and proved very costly. Came around to score while Staub was hitting into a force play. Three balls, two strikes. Stottlemyre delivers. Ball four. He walked him. 
So the two based on balls given up by Stottlemyre have gone to the opposing pitchers. Oh, Woody Schick is on, and Morgan. Morgan is second baseman, little left-hand hitter. He bounced out to Bobby Richardson, bounced out to Pepitone, unassisted, and was safe on an air. One man out. Boyer is in about ten steps on the grass. Saddlemeyer at the belt. Morgan takes a strike in the outside corner. Gave no indication that he would be bunting. Al Reniff gets up for the Yankees down along the left field line. 1-1 one, one ball game. We're all tied up here. Boyer still doesn't believe he's going to swing away. He's in close. One man out. Woody Schick leads off first. The pitch. Strike two. Stottlemyre really let out a notch that time. He just reached back and he pumped one. No balls, two strikes. One man out. One one's the score. Bottom half of the eighth inning. Woody Schick, a couple steps off first. Pepitone holds him close. Here's the two strike pitch. Inside. It's ball one. Stottlemyre like to get him to hit that ground ball where they can turn it over for him. Pitcher's best friend. Nice Alucard double play. Here's the one-two pitch. Swung on a bouncing ball. Pepitone has it. High throw to shoot by Pepitone. What a stick is heading for third. Up with the ball is Hector Lopez as the throw goes into second base. Morgan stopped it first. Hector Lopez, the left fielder, came up with the wild throw by Pepitone. Joe wasn't too sure of that ball when he fielded it. His throw to Kubek was high over Tony's head. Woodishick went steaming in the third. So it's first and third, one man out, and now Spangler is the hitter. Spangler lined hard to center field. He singled the right, and he beat out a bunt. He is two for three. Woody Schick is the third. Morgan is at first. We're all tied. 1-1. One, one. Stottlemyre against Spangler. That's the battle right here. Spangler chokes up on that bat. He's not a power hitter. He sprays that ball. Tough man to double. He can run. Swings and fouls one off. Out of play. Strike one to count. Now John Blanchard wants to go out and talk to his pitcher, Stottlemyer. Obviously, you'd like to get the double play right here, but I'm sure what John is trying to impress on his young right-hander is he's got to let out to get at least a strikeout. He can't afford the luxury of the fly ball right here. This is the one time he's got to keep that ball down. One strike. That announcement is in regard to tomorrow's ball game with the Baltimore Orioles. They don't know whether they'll use orange baseballs, blue baseballs, or white baseballs yet. Right now, Stottlemyre against Spangler at the belt. The pitch is swung on. It's a bouncing ball up the middle. Kubek plays him. He's the place to throw, and they're going to get him. They got him. Kubek to John Blanchard, and Woodishick is out. Nice play by Kubek. That was a, not an easy play for him. John Blanchard blocked Woodyshek and made the tag, so it's two men out. On at second base is Morgan. On at first base is Al Spangler, and the hitter is Rusty Staub. Two men out now. 1-1 one, one ball game. Some fine defensive plays so far tonight. Staub, a good-looking left-hand hitter against Stottlemyre. Here's the pitch. Swung on and missed it. Strike one. This kid really gets his cuts up there, this Staub. Bobby Richardson deep at second base. Over towards the hole. Pepitone deep. They want to knock that ball down. Swung on, popped up. Foul ball, out of play. Nobody can get it. It's strike two. Two strikes to count. Rusty Staub is the hitter. 1-1 one, one ball game. 
Both ball clubs have had men thrown out at home plate. Way outside, nice play by Blanchard. I'm waiting. Dottlemeyer set. The pitch. Outside, just missed. He took a shot at that corner. And this is as far as he wants to go right here. This is the pitch of decision, 2-2. Two -two. You got that little bit of an edge when you're 2-2. Two -two. You lose it all when you're 3-2. And it's got to be strength against strength. Stottlemyre, that low sinker against Rusty Staub, a good low ball hitter. Right now, Stottlemyre at the belt, checks the runners. The 2-2 pitch on the way, swung on, fly ball, deep right field. Maris is going back. He's got room, he's there, makes the catch. Staub hit that ball good. Roger got a good jump on it. Hauled it in, and that ends the inning. There were no runs, there were no hits. There was one Yankee error, and there were two men left on base. So the score at the end of eight full innings of baseball here in the Astrodome. It's all tied up. Yankees won and the Astros won. Bright lights, the baseball. Now there goes the Cowboys shooting their six shooters, their 45s, their 88s, their 99s, or whatever they are. There are the Texas Longhorns, the American flag, and the flag of Texas. It is really some show they're putting on here. Scoreboard is a two million dollar scoreboard, and there go the Rockets. It's a minute show that happens whenever an Astro hits a home run. Blue Rockets, red, yellow Rockets, and that's a horse, I'm sure, from the late late movies. Yes, sir, New York is a summer festival. <laughs> They're really putting on an exhibition. And Miss Astro is in the next booth. I tell you, it's hard to play a game in this Astro Dome. Here we go, top of the ninth, and swung on a bouncing ball foul. Tom Tresh is the hitter, batting right-handed against Woody Shake. Jerry, when was the last time you were in a ballpark this busy? Well, I tell you, people are running all over the place, and uh, as you said, Miss Astrodome is next to us, and she is a lovely young lady. Distracting, to say the least. <laughs> Here's the curveball. Outside. Ball one. That scoreboard is really something. It's a minute show they put on. Strike is called. Boy, that's going to make a big hit with the pitcher. I tell you, it throws a home run, it's going to cause him to lose the lead and have to stand there for a minute and watch that spectacular go off. They'll have to time the runners going around there so they last just one minute. Trish swings and misses. He's out on strikes as Woodyshick gets him on what appeared to be a screwball. That's three strikeouts for this Woodyshick. We're all tied up here. 1-1. One, one. We're in the top half of the ninth inning. Cleet Boyer is the hitter, and Phil Lenz is come out in the on-deck circle. Blanchard is the scheduled hitter. Low, ball one on Cleet Boyer. Now John's had a bad leg. He's been a busy, busy guy, so it could be that manager Johnny Keene is going to go to a pinch hitter, or it could be that Lenz is just standing up there and he'll hit for Stottlemyer. Tap foul. One ball, one strike, one out. Nobody on. Top half of the ninth inning, all tied up. 1-1. One, one. Here is the 1-1 one, one pitch outside. Ball two. That scoreboard is 470 feet long. Outside, ball three. Joe, that's just the distance from home plate to the center field fence in Yankee Stadium. I was, you know, I was starting to ask you that, Jerry. I said, isn't that exactly 467 in center field at Yankee Stadium? Here's the pitch to Boyer. Ball four. He draws the base on balls. He's on, and Lins will be the pinch hitter for John Blanchard. That's the second walk. Now Lindsay is flipping the 
Rosenberg back. Well, he's going to hit all right. Here's the pitch to Lenz. It's a curveball high, and it's ball one. Pedro Gonzalez has come out of the Yankee dugout, and he appears to be the pinch hitter for Mel Stottlemyre. All tied up, 1-1. One, one. Boyer's on at first base. There's one out. Lenz, who's had a real fine spring, waits. Here's the pitch. There goes Boyer. Swung on, line drive, base hit, center field. Boyer around second. He's digging for third, and he'll make it easily as Lenz comes through with the single up the middle in a hit-and-run situation. So it's first and third. One man out, and now Gonzalez is the hitter. Lenz comes through with that big base hit. Super sub does it again. So now there's a big conference on the mound. Gonzalez is the pinch hitter for Stottlemyre. All tied, 1-1 one, one here. Woodishick and Brand, there's any number of things they could be talking about. Lillis wants to make sure just what they're going to happen. Last time, the possibility of the double steal, Brand held the ball and did not throw it through. Just one thing I'm sure he's talking about. Now the second baseman, Morgan, checks with Lillis as to what's going to happen. And the possibility of the squeeze play is ever present. Time is called now. Morgan wants to know just how they should play it. Now, Bond is holding close. As for money, he's even with the bag. Lillis and Morgan are back. Here is the pitch to Gonzalez. Swung on and missed in a strike one. Morgan is very unsure of himself. He doesn't know exactly where he should play. He's only played one year. So he's looking for some help and uh, giving it to him. Gonzalez foul tips it. All the way back. And it's a quick two-strike count on Pedro Gonzalez. Youngster signed as a free agent November 1st, so you can imagine. Morgan. Young second baseman. He's about even with that bag now. Here's the two-strike pitch by Woodyshick to Gonzalez. A foul tip. Just did get enough of it. He was way out in front of a curveball. On the third base is Boyer. On the first base is Phil Lynn. We're all tied up here. 1-1. One, one. We're in the top of the ninth inning. Woodyshick checks the runners. The pitch to Gonzalez is swung on. It's a bouncy ball. Lillis is short. Has it the second. One out. Over to first. Double play. They got it. Gonzalez hit that ball sharply, but Bob Lillis, a fine play. Three quick steps to his right. Gave it to his second baseman, Morgan, over to first, and they turned it over for the double play. So no runs. There was one hit. No errors. One man was left on base. And at the end of eight and a half innings of baseball, here's the score. Yankees won. And the Astros won. Void where prohibited are restricted by law. Hal Reniff and Bob Schmidt, the new battery for the Yankees. And right here, let's pause for station identification. Richard Hayes pinch hits for Jack Sterling. Tomorrow morning, 6 to 10 a.m. This is WCBS and WCBS-FM, New York. Al Renniff against Waller Bond in the bottom of the ninth, all tied up here, 1-1. One, one. Bond, big left-hand hitter. He had a double in the fourth inning. He drilled one in the left center field. Here's the pitch by Renniff. Swung on and fouled off. This big guy gets a good cut up there, Waller Bond. He wears a miniature shin guard to protect against the foul tip that he constantly is hitting himself with, and then he wears that golf glove. Whoops, he had to get out of the way of that one. Low fastball had him hopping around like it was hot cinders time. One ball and one strike. Nobody out, nobody on. All tied up. Yankees won, the Astros won. Bottom of the ninth inning. Reniff delivers. Swung on and pulled foul past the first base coach, Adair. And it's one ball, two strikes. The Astros 
dark socks with a star on each leg. A star on her cap. And one of them saying, we got stars everywhere but except playing. A lot of good old-fashioned ribbon going on today. Here's the pitch by Renham. Swung on a little looper. That's a face hit in the center field. Walter Bond, wide turn, but heads back now as Crash comes up with it. He hit that ball like he was using a tennis racket. Boy, that's the kind when you're playing, you say, how could a man that big hit it so soft? But he hit it in the right spot, right up the middle. He served one, and that's a big base hit because now... In the bottom of the ninth inning, all tied up. They got that man on. This crowd now starts to really come to life. Bob Aspermani's the hitter. He flies to center. He bounced out, and he fouled out. Boyer at third, looking for the bunt. Big Walter Bond leads off first base. Reniff checks him. Here's the pitch. Aspermani bunts it down the first base line. It rolls foul. Foul, foul, foul. And it's strike one. He's going to have to make Pepitone feel that ball because Boyer is really challenging Aspermani. He takes a good look now down at third base coach Jim Busby. And Boyer talking to uh, Renniff. Pepitone holding Walter Bond, the base runner, close. Yankees, one. Astros, one. Bottom of the ninth. Nobody out. Aspermani the hitter. Walter Bond at first base. Hal Renniff. Here's the pitcher. Boyer edging in at third base. Renniff at the belt. Checks the runner. Aspermani swings away. A bouncy ball back to Renniff. The play's at second base. Kubek out over the first double play. They got it. Manager Lum Harris switched off. And Renniff jammed Aspermani. Hit him right on the thumbs. Aspermani bounced one right back to Renniff. Renniff quickly wheeled and turned to Kubek. Kubek got that ball on his way to Pepitone. One, six, three, double play. Pitcher's best friend. And that brings up Jim Wynn. Strike. Fastball caught that inside corner. One strike. Renniff delivers. Strike two. And that was the curveball. Two strikes to count on Jim Wynn. All tied up here. Yankees won, Astros won. Bottom of the ninth. Wynn waits. The pitch just misses outside a curveball. One ball, two strikes. Outfield straight away, not too deep. Hal Renner made a fine play. Boy, knowing who's going to cover at second base, that's what made that play. He knew Kubek was covering. He gave it to him perfectly. High. Fastball. Two balls and two strikes. That's as far as he wants to go. Wynn was out on strikes. He bounced out in the fifth and bounced out in the seventh. Renner for Justin's glasses. And that always makes the hitter feel good. Here is the 2-2 pitch now. Swung on, line drive, base hit, center field. So, Wynn keeps it alive. He's on. Throw comes in. They got him diving back to first base. Bobby Richardson really gave him the Academy Award job on that one. Wynn, he hit that ball, and he came scooting a wide turnaround first, and Bobby picked it up. And as the throw came in, Bobby Whelan picked a quick throw, and Jim Wynn went diving back. So there are two outs, base runner at first base, and the hitter is Bob Lillis. The flea. This little guy, a tough man who strike out, constantly gets that bat on that ball. Renniff checks the runner. There's a lob throw to first base. They used to keep him honest over there. Wynn can run. He's a threat to steal. Big lead. There. Fake start. Bouncing ball. Boyer has it. The flip to Bobby Richardson. The force is on. That win really gave it a good false start. I tell you, I thought he was going. Boyer flips to Bobby Richardson. The force is on. That ends the inning. There were no runs. There were two hits, no errors. One man was left on base. 
And at the end of nine innings of baseball here, we're all tied up. Yankees won, the Astros won. And, Red, if we're going to go into first this and first that, and you're going to be the first announcer to do the first extra inning game in the first Astrodome built in the first city in Houston or whatever it is. <laughs> you're going to be the first one. Uh -huh, that reminds <laughs> me. You heard of Adam and Eve? Yeah, I remember those fellows. I wasn't the first fellow then. <laughs> well, you know, friends, I think it's wonderful. They've got this big Astrodome Stadium, and they've uh, had all this publicity, and everything's been building for the night. The president uh, has come, and uh, Joe, the ball game is worth it. It's a very exciting game. Yes. I think it's just poetic justice that it's going in next city. Yes, sir. I tell you, it's been a great ball game. You could have played in the old cow pasture in the North 40. It'd have been worth it. But here at this uh, beautiful stadium, it's just been a great ball game. So we've got uh, Hal Wittishek out there, and he's protected uh, the situation since he took over two innings ago. Hector Lopez will be first up in the top of the tent here at Houston in the Astrodome. Paid attendance, 47,876. They sold 3,000 standing room tickets. They had been notified in advance uh, by the fire department they would not be allowed to sell over 5,000. Hector Lopez, right-hand hitter, takes a curve low inside. Now, of course, this is the opening of this stadium. They're opening the new Atlanta Stadium tonight. At the end of the seventh inning, it is Milwaukee 5 and Detroit 3, and Milwaukee will have to wait a year to where they own it. Pitch is over for the strike. One ball, one strike. Hector Lopez batting for his first time. Arturo Lopez ran for Mantle in the seventh, in the eighth, and then Hector took over in the outfield. Takes low, ball two. Two and one. We've had very sharp defensive play. We've had some double plays that have been duties. Pitches, I call second strike, right under the shoulders. Two and two. The Yankees came up with one just now in the top of the ninth. In the a ground foul alongside third. The Yankees have come up with three double plays this evening. The Astros with one. Inning 10. Vern Benson coaching down at first. Frank Rossetti at third. Big left-handed delivers, and there's a ground ball hit. Foul just by foot outside third base. 1-1 one, one tie. To add to uh, the headlines of the evening, Mantle hit the first home run, and so far the only one at the Astrodome in the sixth inning. And proper in the last half, the Astros came back and tied it. There is strike three swinging. One out, top of the tent. Four strikeouts for Hal Wittichick. Far off, it's the first seven for Houston. Now we have Bobby Richardson. All for four. Trim, right-hand batter. Takes outside. Ball one. Mel Steiner of the National League staff. Back of the plate this evening. Knapp of the American at first, Landis of the National at second, and Salerno of the American at third. Richardson, a hot one bounce to the short. The far right over in time to Walter Bond. The ball and one big bounce to Bob Lillis, so we have two quick outs, top of the tenth. Roger Maris. Walked in the first inning. Fly ball to center. Popped the short in the line drive that Rusty Starr made the fine catch on in the eighth. Left-handed pitcher, left-hand hitter. Side on, right over, ball strike. Curve, low outside, ball one. One and one. A high foul ball back and into the stand. One and two. What a shot who came on two and two thirds innings ago. He 
been in trouble. Eighth and in the ninth. Got out of it. And Maris is hit with an inside pitch. Down to first he goes. First hit batter of the game. <coughs> Joe Pepito. Singled his last two tries. Two for four. Joe hit the big one last night at Jackson. Pepitone, left-hand batter. Wittishik comes set, pitches. Inside, Pepitone goes down there to throw to first. And so quick was the catcher's throw that I believe that that was an intentional play all the way. Sometimes they order a hitter to go down in order that the catcher can get a clear shot at first base, particularly if he's a left-hand batter. Ball one. Maris is back. Wittesick checks first pitches, and Pepitone takes in on the hands, and it is ball two. Two and oh. Catch a brand out at the mound, talking to Wittesick. Another stocky little receiver. Trotting back, take up his defensive post. 1-1 one, one tie, two out, top of the 10. They throw to first. Maris back. It's going to be a tremendous weekend in Houston. Pepperton, half swing, a foul off. Strike one. Tomorrow afternoon, Orioles playing the Astros. Tomorrow night, the Yankees play the Astros. Sunday afternoon, it's the Yankees. And then Sunday night, it's the Orioles again. Went around Robin. Pepitone, a ground ball is short. Slip over to second for the easy force on Maris, and that ends matters in the top of the tenth inning. That was Lillis over to Morgan. So the score, end of nine and a half, the Yankees won and the Astros won. Well, here we go some more at the Astrodome in Houston. This is the first time in Major League history that we've had checks printed without rain checks. No rain checks here. Rain check uh, was invented about 1890. So you might say this is the first time organized ball since then. Last of the 10th, the catcher, Ron Brand, right-hand batter, first up. Relief pitcher, Hal Rennie, comes down with a curve low, ball one. Stottlemyre went the first um, eight innings. Rennick came on, inning nine. There's a foul back. One and one. Jim Busby coaching down in third. Jimmy Adair coaching at first. Rennick pitching. Bob Smith is now catching. Right handed delivers in for the strike. One and two. Ball game hanging one and one. One run, eight hits, three errors to New York. One run, six hits, no errors for Houston. Curve is hit to short. Kubak, a backhanded pickup. The beautiful throw is there, and he gets him. Tony Kubak throws him out from the hole. And Tony has made, I would say, about four hard throws tonight. One out. Last half of the tenth. Now we have uh, Hal Wittishek, the pitcher, coming on. Gets around. It'll be very interesting to get the comments of the ball players who have participated in this game this evening when they're in the clubhouse afterwards. Pitches outside. We, of course, will have a chance. We'll go back on the bus with the Yankees to the hotel. And I imagine, Jerry, they'll really be popping off. Red, there's no question about it. Uh, the way I see this ball game, this is just another game except it's indoors. They're playing well, good plays, good action, good everything. Foul back. The thing I want to hear them talk about is when they play at 1.30 Sunday afternoon. 
I think that's going to be the story. In fact, uh, I'm going to be out here a little bit early tomorrow to check some of those Oriole uh, players. You can't wait for Sunday? Well, I'd rather know, so I'll be ready to tell people tomorrow night. All right, I'll listen to you. Uh, Renneth comes down with the curveball too low, ball two. Two balls, two strikes, Whittishick hitting. That'll be something. Coleman out here rehearsing tomorrow afternoon for his broadcast tomorrow evening. I want to see it. Pitch is over. Curveball. Call strike three. First strike out for Rennie. Now we have two down. Last half of the tenth. And here is Joe Morgan, who is the young second baseman and the leadoff of tonight. The ten by them. He's been on by errors by Pepitone his last two trips. Takes a curve, low inside, ball one. Rennick wastes little time. Pitches over for the strike, one and one. A little step toward right. Boyer is up on the inner grass, third. Suspicious. Morgan may attempt to lay one down. Rennick pumps. Which is high and hard for ball two. Two and one. Schmidt gives a sign, stays low. Curve swung on. There is a looper in the right center for a base hit. A single for Morgan, so the winning run is on with two out last of the tenth inning. Hit number three off Rennie, number seven for the Astros in the debut of their famed ballpark. Here is Al Spangler, who's had two base hits. He had a bunt single in the sixth inning, which was quite pivotal as the Astros got their run. Otherwise, this thing would have been over. It is now. It isn't. It's one and one. Rennie stepping to the back of the mound, tightening the lace on his right shoe. Looks around, checks the infield deployment. Spangler, left hand batter. Rennie throws casually over to first. He started his motion. Continued it, of course, to avoid a ball. Morgan leading off. Draws another throw. Renniff is now definitely suspicious that Morgan may try and steal on him. Get the winning run halfway around. Morgan taking his lead. It's a good lead. He goes. Pitch is taken as the throw, and he steals it. It's a call strike at the plate. Morgan stole it. He went right down and got it. Last year at San Antonio, in 140 games, he stole 47. So now the winning runs at second base. And what do they do with Spangler, left-hand hitter? Do they put him on? Or do they pitch to him? Two are out. Four at first base. One one tie. Renniff is going to pitch to him. He works, and there is a high fly ball hit out of the short left field. Here's Hector Lopez coming over, and the ball is foul and caught. It is caught beautifully by Boyer, who went deep from third base. So that ends that threat. Boyer went deep back from third when it looked as though he had no chance and caught the foul ball. So that ends that. No runs. One hit. So that gets us to the end of ten, and the totals are one run, eight hits, and three errors for New York. One run, seven hits, and no errors for Houston, and we'll pause for station identification. This is WCBS and WCBS-FM, New York. Now, Jerry, before we have inning 11, what's with you? Well, we got a lot of action coming up at Yankee Stadium very shortly. And I'll give you some of the highlights in the first big week of baseball or the first few weeks at the stadium. Opening day will be Wednesday, April the 21st, with the Minnesota Twins. 
the first Sunday, April 25, with the Angels. First night game, Friday, April the 30th, against the Orioles. And the first big doubleheader at the stadium, May the 2nd, also against the Orioles. If you'd like to get free copies of the official Yankee American League schedule book and the Ballantine 12-page Yankee pocket schedule, write right now to the schedule department care of the New York Yankees, Yankee Stadium, Bronx, New York. And that's zip code 10451. Now we move into the 11th. Here's Red Barber. Right, Jerry, the ball game hanging at one and one. Kubek first up in the 11th, left-hand batter. Left-hander Woodishek, the second pitcher for Houston, delivers, and there's a ground foul outside first base. Softman down to the coacher, Benson. Pete Mickelson starts warming up for New York. Foul ground outside the left field line. That feels straight away on Tony. Kubek has gone off for four this evening. Takes an outside curve that is too wide. One and one. Inning 11. It's a fitting ball game for this dramatic opening of this fabulous ballpark. Curve, low outside, ball two. Notice today that uh, the current issue of Look Magazine has a piece on the Astrodome. Tony hits a ground ball to the first baseman. Bond is up, steps on the bag for the unassisted out. One down. Tom Tresh, switcher, batting right-handed. Tresh is 0 for 4. He was telling us before the game that his right leg is giving him a little trouble. He pulled it down at um, San Juan, Puerto Rico. Pitches wide, ball one. Wittishik used to be over in the American League. Pitches outside, changed off, ball two. Two and oh. Paid attendance, 47,876. Foul back. Of course, these teams will do tremendous business here this weekend. Because of the new stadium. Foul back. The um, figure of 47, almost 48,000, does not approach an exhibition game record. The greatest exhibition game crowd that we have in history. It was around 93,000 out at uh, the Coliseum in Los Angeles. There's a high fly ball back into left field. Spangler going back, close to the warning track, and in the corner makes the catch. Press is out. The crowd was a little apprehensive there for a second. That big crowd, the exhibition game, was the benefit for Roy Campanella that the Dodgers put on and the Yankees went out and participated, if you'll recall. And that will stand for all time, I'm certain. At least for my time. Then, of course, there was one day where the Dodgers at the stadium, you'll recall, on an Easter Sunday in which they had over 60,000 for an exhibition game. But again, here's Boyum. Takes a ground ball, hits it up to third. There's a throw over from Astromati for the out. What I started to say is you don't know how many they'd have had tonight with its time at Houston had they had more seats. Anyhow, the score at the end of ten and a half remains the Yankees one and the Astros one. Last half of the 11th inning. 1-1 one, one ball game, and the Yankee relief man, Hal Rennett, will be pitching to Rusty Staub, Walter Bond, Bob Aspromonte. Staub is a tall, uh, red-headed, left-handed hitter. His hair is a reddish tinge, which explains his nickname, Rusty. He had a fine catch of a line drive in the ninth inning against Maris. That still shades him into right. Right hand to Rennie, ready to go. Gets the curve in for a call strike. 
Nothing in one. Foul back. Thank you. Pete Mickelson warming up for the Yankees. And down the right field line, Todd Raymond is warming up for the Astros. Manager Harris can't be too profligate with his pitches for Houston. He has four more exhibition games in two days. There's another foul back. Then he opens the season Monday. However, he is definitely holding Bob Bruce out of this weekend. Bruce will be his starting pitcher Monday against Philadelphia. Ready for any? Deals. Curve that is fouled into the dirt. Still two strikes. The definite World Series atmosphere has pervaded the entire evening. Writers are here from all over the United States, which is the tip off in the interest. Two strike pitch again. Strike three swinging. Strike him out. Now we have one down. Run his first strike out. Big left handed hitter Walter Bond coming on. He's wearing a, a batter shin guard down on his right foot. And he has played tonight with a golf club with fingers on his right hand, even though he's had to throw the ball with it. Swings as a ground ball right to Peppertone, who's up, steps on first base, and we very quickly have two up. Bob Astromani. Two down, last of the 11th. Then he rubs up the ball and trying to break it. Pitches, a curve low outside, ball one. When you look out at this um, covered ballpark, while there can be no factor with the attendance or with the play of the event, you realize uh, what lies ahead in the future for it. Pitch is low. Ball two. There's just got to be championship fights. Great conventions, political or otherwise. When it works, there's a foul back out of play. Two and one. Football is already set for this fall. And of course, these stands are constructed. They have sections on track that can, with a press of a button, can be wheeled into position and 10,000 more seats made available. The ground ball down to deep short. Kubek, who's made long throws all evening, makes one more. And that's the end of 11. Nothing across. Totals at the end of 11. 183 for New York. 170 for the Astros. Well, Jerry, you've been surveying the scene and making observations. Seeing the wheels turn round and round. What do you think about it now? Well, I think we got a 1-1 tie anyway, Red. And uh, the way this ball game is going... We could be here a while. We need the one big punch by somebody, and great defensive plays have been eliminating many of the threats in the late innings. The Yankees took the lead in this ball game in the sixth inning when Mantle hit the first home run ever in the Astrodome. That was in the dead center field in the bleachers there. That was leading off the sixth inning. And then the Astros countered in the bottom of the sixth, when Turk Farrell walked, Joe Morgan was safe on an error. Spangler bunting beat it out to load him up. And then on a ground ball by Rusty Staub to Pepitone, Farrell scored. And that's all we've had. And that's the way it stands as we move into the 12th inning. Yankees won, the Astros won. The Yanks have eight hits. They've made three errors. The Astros, seven hits. And they have played errorless ball. Now here comes Bob Schmidt on for his first appearance to the plate in tonight's action. Moving into the top of the 12th inning. Schmidt, 
who still is not on the Yankee roster. But if Johnny Keene's statement early this spring means anything, he said he wanted to carry three catchers. And that's all we've got, Howard, Blanchard, and Schmidt right now. So it looks like Bob may have a crack at making this ball club as it stands this moment. Hal Woodishick, the left-hander, has been in there since the eighth inning. Uh, throws a fastball that cuts the plate strike one. Dick Farrell pitched the first seven, gave up six hits, allowed the only run out the homer by Mattel, and Woodishuk came on and been in there. Eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, moves into the twelfth. It's one and one the count to Bob Schmidt. Schmidt takes outside. Two balls and a strike. This ball game has moved right along. We've been in action only two and a half hours. And we're going into the 12th inning. Schmidt, a half swing, call strike three by the plate umpire, Mel Steiner. And Schmidt couldn't hold it as he went around. So there's one out here. And that is strikeout number five by Woodishick. Hal Renniff is the scheduled batter. Let's see who they bring up. Ross Machido, the utility outfielder, is on his way. Yes, it is. Young Ross Machido, a first-year player. He had 20 home runs last year in the Appalachian League. It was his first year out, played in 70 ball games. Well, we've got a sign on the center field board, Joe. This guy's got some sense of humor. This is the longest game ever played in the Astrodome. It's all right. Got to go for it. Yes, sir. We're having a first of a lot of things this evening. Here's Ross Machito coming on to bat for Renup. The first pitch by Wittichek is outside. It's ball one. Machito, uh, truly, at a very early age, a great defensive outfielder, and the question is, how much will he hit? A ground hopper to deep short. Lillis up with it. The long throw with a good arm is in time, and we have two down. So two quick ones by the Yankees here in the top of the 12th and that'll bring up Hector Lopez who struck out in his only appearance in the 10th inning. Mickelson has been warming up for the Yankees so he'll be going in in the bottom of the 12th to face the Astros. Here's the first pitch to Hector Lopez. Takes outside and it's ball one. What a shake is a type of left-hander who has the ball and moves away from the right-handers and when you start to pull him you can't do it. You've got to go to the opposite field with this fellow when he throws that fastball out there. And Hector swings this on the end of the bat toward first base coach Vern Benson, who picks it up and flips it back to the pitcher. The minute you try to pull these left-handers with the ball a tail away from the right-hand batters, the shortstop gets a lot of activity. Sort of a half screw ball. Here's the... Whoa. <laughs> well, he missed the catcher, the umpire, and Lopez, and threw a one-hopper back on the screen. Two balls and one strike. That was a screwball that he was attempting that got away from him completely. That missed Brand a good 10 feet. 1-1 one, one ball game, top of the 12th. The next pitch to Lopez, fastball is low and inside this time, 3-1. and one. Two down, nobody on. The Yankees batting. Claude Raymond, a right-hander, is warming up for the Astros in the bullpen. Now, here's a pitch to Lopez. Strike two called. Beauty. Three and two the count. Two down. Lopez with a 311 batting average thus far this spring. Now, what a shake again. The payoff pitch is hit into straightaway center field. Jim Wynn, with the good legs, drifts to his left and takes it. Three up and three down for the Yankees. Top of the 12th, the score after 11 and a half. The Yankees, one run on eight hits. The Astros, one run on seven hits. Well, how'd you like to see the 1965 World Series in person, is my guess. And I'm not kidding, because that's part of the grand prize in the Flying A $250,000 Big League Sweepstakes. You and five of your friends could win expense pay trips to all the 65 World Series games wherever played. Plus, and listen to this, $10,000 in cash. How do you like that for a grand prize? Got thousands of other prizes as well. Ford Mustang convertibles, RCA Victor TV sets, Waltham wristwatches, portable transistor radios, 
and baseball Hall of Fame statuette set. And all you have to do is stop in at your nearby Flying A service station, fill out an entry blank. You don't have to buy a thing. Drawings are held every week through May the 3rd, so you've got thousands of chances to win, and you could win expense-paid trips to the World Series for yourself and five friends, plus $10,000 in cash. Why don't you see your Flying A dealer for details today and enter the Flying A $250,000 big league sweepstakes? Well, we've got a new pitcher. Pete Mickelson has come on to face the Astros here in the bottom of the 12th inning. He's the third Yankee pitcher. Mel Stottlemyre went the first eight, gave up four hits in one run. Renup pitched three innings, gave up three hits, and has allowed no runs. 1-1 one, one tie, bottom of the 12th. Now here's Jim Wynn. He's one for three. Right-hand hitting center fielder. This young fellow made a great play to knock off on a run at the plate when Johnny Blanchard tried to score from second on a base hit to center. And he can move in that outfield, find a defensive ball player, and that hitting comes along. It'll be quite an asset to this ball club. All right, here's Mickelson, the sinker baller, sidearm, fastball. It's low, and it's ball one. Nicholson checking Schmidt for the sign. The 1 0 pitch to win is in there. Strike one, one and one. So here, the first game in the Astro Dome from Houston, Texas. 47,876 paid customers here tonight. We got our first extra inning game. 1 1 pitch to win is fouled at the plate. Count now, one ball, two strikes. For those of you who may have just tuned in, Mantle started the scoring with the first home run ever in the Astrodome with a shot into the center field bleachers. That was in the top of the six. The Astros countered with their run in the bottom of the six, and that's the way it stood. We had the President of the United States, Lyndon Johnson here, Governor of Texas, John Connolly, a lot of dignitaries. There's a curveball way outside to the center fielder win, two and two. And this park is still full. A few people have drifted away, but those seats make it a relaxing way to enjoy a ball game. Beautiful, plush seats all over the park. Win a ground ball. Boyer can't get it off the glove. Kubek's a long throw, a jump throw. It's not in time. Well, if he'd have made that one, he'd have made them all. That ball caromed off Boyer's glove. Kubek, with a backhand lunge, got it, jumped in the air, and tried to throw to first, but Wynn moved down that line. So that'll go as a base hit for Jim Wynn, leading off the bottom of the 12th. That's his second hit of the night. He's now uh, two for five. First hit off Mickelson as he came on in this ball game. Now here's Bob Lillis. Here's a professional ball player. He knows what to do. A fine utility man. Not a great hitter, but he can bunt, he can run, and he knows the score. He takes outside on a pitch out, and it's ball one. Boyer was practically on top of home plate, breaking in. Pepitone on the move as well. Now Jim Buzzy giving Busby giving these signs at third base. Lillis has it. Lillis, who began his pro career in the Dodger organization. He squares away and takes Hine inside, a fastball, and tried to back him off the plate. 2-0 and the count. Now, many managers will advocate that a pitcher bust a batter. When I say that, I mean try to get him right around those letters in the shoulder, a high fastball, because that's the toughest pitch to bunt. And that's what Mickelson tried to do, but he got it too far inside. All right, 2-0 and the count. Win leading off first. Nobody out. L last of the 12th. 1-1 one, one score. Lillis takes a fastball right down the middle, and it looked like he was taking all the way that time. So it's two and one now. That was the ball to bunt. Right around the knees for a strike. All right, Busby with more signs. Jimmy Adair coaches at first base before the Astros. Jimmy Wynn, fast man, moving off first. Mickelson sets and throws the first, and they almost got him at first base. Pepitone, moving back, had to handle a high throw from Mickelson and couldn't quite get his glove on the runner in time. Last of the 12th, 1-1 one, one ball game. And there goes the runner. The pitch is fouled down the third base side on a hit-and-run play. So, 
We found out one thing tonight. Lumman Harris has changed the book. He switched twice. Once he ran into a jam as a man hit into a double play, and tonight, again, he tried to switch. Jerry, I, no way in the world you could keep this statistic, but it would be one I'd really be interested in. How many times a manager will run when a situation warrants it? Two balls and one strike. He got that catcher in the box. There's not much he can do. And, brother, if there was ever a manager's delight, that's the count. Two and one. All right, here's Lillis back in there. A win leading off first. The pitch to Bobby. Bunch of two strikes, and he's out of there. That ball fouled back against the screen. And Lillis is charged with a strikeout. Mickelson gets credit for the strikeout. There's one away. Now here's Jim Wynn. And right now, Harris is in that dugout trying to wonder, when can I get a bunt? Ron Brand, the catcher who tripled, fly to center, bounced to third, and bounced to short. A great play by Kubek on the bounce to short. It was deep in the hole to throw him out. All right, Wynn goes back to first as Mickelson tosses over there again. Claude Raymond continues to throw for the Astros in the bullpen. Last of the 12th, 1-1 one, one ball game. Another throw, a quicker one this time, and Wynn is back. Jim Beecham coming on. He'll do some hitting here for the pitcher, Woodashek. As Brand fouls this one toward the Yankee dugout, and it bounces in there. What I want to say, you foul a ball toward a dugout around here, you got a lot of place to foul it. That's 120 feet. They got the bullpen and the dugout together in one fell swoop down the right and left field sides. And I would venture to say that the dugout is two and a half times the size of the one at Yankee Stadium. It is vast and huge and long. All right, win with the lead. The one-strike pitch. There goes the runner. Slow curveball. Swung on a miss, and Smith couldn't get rid of the ball, and Wynn steals the base. Throw the tying and winning run, rather. Goes to second base. The last of the 12. And Wynn picked the perfect pitch to go. That slow change of pace. Uh, Schmidt couldn't have got him unless he had a uh, maybe a machine gun. Oh, he had a good jump on Mickelson. So the Astros put the winning run at second with one out. Nothing and two. The count to the batter, Ron Brand. Mickelson has swung on a miss. Strike three. Now it looks like we've got a switch, and it's Nellie Fox coming on. Jim Beecham was scheduled to hit. He's been pulled out, and here comes Nellie Fox. Brand striking out. There are two down. That's the second strikeout by Mickelson. Well, Nellie Fox, who in a very short time has become a favorite here in Houston, steps up to the plate with a runner at second base, Jim Wynn, two down, 1-1 one, one ball game, last to the 12th. Nicholson. Set. Delivers. Fox swings and misses. Strike one. A good sinker. Fox batting for Woodishick. Fox right now is listed as a coach, but that could change overnight. Fox fouls this one back, nothing and two. In fact, talking to Harris before the game, I asked him whether or not Fox would be put on the active list. And he said, not until Joe Morgan plays himself out of a job, if at all. In other words, if the young second baseman Morgan continues to shine, then Fox will be stay as a coach. No balls, two strikes, two down. Runner at second, 1-1 one, one ball game. Last half of the 12th inning. Nellie Fox, a great favorite in the American League for many years and with the White Sox. Hits a pitch into center field, base hit. This could be the ball game. Here comes the runner. The throw is not in time, and the Astros win it. Celebration here at the Astrodome as the Astros win the first ball game ever played here by a score of two to one. 
for the Astros here in the 12th inning. Two out when the winning run scored. That a single to center field by Nellie Fox, scoring Jim Wynn, who had opened the inning with an infield single. Then stole second base, came home behind the slicing single into center field off the bat of Nellie Fox. And right now we had a one minute workout on that giant scoreboard in center field. And ready to bring you up to date on the highlights of this first game in the Astrodome. All the totals. Here's Joe Garagiola. Joseph, take it away. Right, Jerry. A 2-1 to one victory. So the hometowners go home happy from the Astrodome here in Houston. A ball game, as we've talked about uh, throughout the night, befitting this uh, big debut of this magnificent Astrodome. And I tell you, a favorite, Nellie Fox did it for the uh, hometown fans as he came through with a uh, typical Nellie Fox base hit. A little looper in the center field. You could see when he got the two quick strikes, he was going to bear down and get a piece of it, and he sent it right back up the middle. This Houston uh, ball club uh, scored their two runs in typical uh, fashion. I say typical because this is a ball club that does not have a lot of power, a lot of singles hitters in this lineup. The Yankees scored their one run on a home run by Mickey Mantle in the sixth inning, a tremendous shot off Dick Farrell into the center field seats. And Houston came back in the sixth inning, a base on balls to Turk Farrell, and then there was an error, ground ball hit by Morgan, and it put Farrell on at second base. Then Spangler beat out a bunt. So they had the bases loaded, the ball was not hit out of the infield, but they were there, bases loaded. And now Staub hit into a force play from Richardson to Kubek, and Farrell scored what was the tying run at that time. So they picked it up with the uh, base on balls, the air, and good base running. And they broke the tie here with the stolen base figuring uh, in the scoring. Wynn got a base hit. Kubek made a fine play as he backhanded the ball. Could not throw him out at first base. Wynn was safe and then stole second on a slow curveball. He picked the perfect pitch to go, and then Nellie Fox came through with the big base hit. A lot of fine defensive plays here tonight. Kubek was just outstanding as he roamed all over shortstop, and then it was a fine throw by uh, Wynn uh, to get John Blanchard at the plate. So it's a 2-1 to one victory for the Houston Astros in this first game here in the Astrodome, and the line score goes something like this. Two runs, nine hits, and no errors for Houston. Woodishick is the winning pitcher. One run, eight hits, and three errors for the Yankees. The losing pitcher is Pete Mickelson. Mel Stottlemyre looked great uh, for the Yankees, as did uh, Hal Renner. But the Houston Astros win in a pinch hit by Nellie Fox, and it's a 2-1 to one score, Houston over the Yankees. Now, our next ball game, we'll see the Yankees against the Astros right here in Houston, and our airtime will be at 8.25 p.m. And we'll all be on hand to bring you every play. And this Yankee broadcast came to you by courtesy of P. Ballantyne & Sons, the R.J. Reynolds Tobacco Company, and the Tidewater Oil Company and your neighborhood Flying A service station dealer. We sure hope you've enjoyed it and hope you'll remember to tune us in again tomorrow night at 8.25 right here from the Astrodome. Once again, the score here in extra innings, 12 innings, Houston 2 and the Yankees 1. And now this is Joe Garagiola for Red Barber, Jerry Coleman, and Phil Rizzuto saying so long, everybody.